Hello guys, today we will be talking about What if Naruto was in high school DXD part 2? If you enjoy this video please like and subscribe. Now let's begin. To say that Rias was anxious about this game was an understatement. She was fucking losing her head over the game. Who would not be when your marriage is at stake here? However, she was calmed down when her peerage reassured her that they are going to win. She had plenty of trust in her peerage and besides she was trained by that Spartan Naruto. Master. I will make you proud thought Rias and then went on to explain the plan to her peerage. Alright gang, this is the plan. I have watched a couple of Riser's old raiding games with the help of Master Naruto's resources. Right now the thing is that they outnumber us. So we are going to use surgical tactics to weaken Riser's group while defending this area said Rias and turned to Kiba. Kiba, take Issei with you and go occupy the school gymnasium. If my hunch is right, then Riser would send his low-ranking pieces there so that he could move in on our position. She then turned towards Akeno and Konako and said, Akeno, I want you to go along with Konako and set up as many traps as possible on this terrain. You are to then ambush the group and take them out at once. If that is not possible you are to separate them and move towards the other groups, i.e. us. I will stay back along with Asia providing commands to you. If you are injured seriously then come back here immediately. Asia will heal you with her magic. Also, there is a possibility that Riser's queen or his little sister will have a supply of Fenex tears. So try to steal them off after you defeat them if possible. Don't let them use the tears. Fenex tears, asked Issei with a bewildered expression, what good will their tears do to them? Rias sighed and explained, Issei, the phoenix is an immortal bird that was said to undergo rebirth by fire once its lifespan ends. One of the bird's other abilities is to heal any grievous injury by the application of its tears. The Fenex family is said to be related to that creature and thus their tears hold the same property as the bird's tears. Wait. So that would mean that they can heal any fatal injury. What the hell? That's bullshit, said Issei with an incredulous expression. Konako handed out some magical communicators to them and each of them fitted it up to their ear. Hardly, considering we have Asia's twilight healing. Don't worry though they can use the tears only maximum of two times. So we are good as long we are not caught off guard from that said Rias calming down Issei who gave her an embarrassed smile. She too smiled at him and then turned towards the entire peerage and said, all right. You have your orders. Move out. Let's win this one for the club. Said Rias. Yes president, said the entire group leaving the area. With Kiba and Issei they had come to the gymnasium as planned and were silently waiting in ambush. Just as predicted six girls entered the auditorium together and were scoping the area out. They arranged themselves in a pentagon with each girl facing each direction and one girl in the middle. Kiva and Issei prepared themselves for battle. They looked at each other and performed a bunch of hand signals to communicate. Once they finished forming a plan they grinned. The girls entered their field of action and now the pair moved. Issei quickly attacked the girl on the left end of them while Kiva attacked the girl on the right end. What the hell? Look out, said a girl in the middle who noticed them however she was too late because the girl on the rightmost and leftmost corners were taken out. One pawn and one knight of Riser Fenex have been eliminated, announced a voice that sounded like Grafia. Sneaky sons of bitches. Carla mean. I am gonna pound you to the ground, said a staff user who moved out of formation and attacked Issei first. Issei dodged the attack and looked at the pair of magic users who were chanting spells. He narrowed his eyes and quickly moved towards them however he was stopped when the staff user got him from behind. Haha, <laughs> bitch. How does it feel for your favor to be returned, said the staff user called Myra. Meanwhile, Kiba was busy with a martial artist who used flames to augment her attacks. Hello, handsome. My name is Swollen. Please lose for Lord Riser's sake, said Swollen. Sorry, no can do. My president's life is at stake for this one. Said Kiba and assaulted Swollen by summoning swords of the ground. Swollen dodged those attacks. She then moved towards Kiba with the intent to perform an uppercut. Kiba tried to bring his swords to block the attack but it turned out to be a feint as she moved her leg to perform a kick to his waist sending him flying away. Issei announced, Kiba. Disrupt the magic of the bishops first. They are chanting one big ass spell. Don't let them complete it, said Issei warning Kiba while performing a magic spell on him. Boosted gear, boosted gift. Thanks for the boost Issei, said Kiba and summoned multiple swords cutting off the bishops chanting but it was too late. The bishop shouted, paralysis array. 
Immediately, a net of symbols formed on the ground. Issei was able to move away from it but Kiba who was on the area was caught in the array and was paralyzed. One night down, take out the pawn. He should be pretty easy enough, said the bishop who started chanting once again. Shit. It's only me now, thought a panicked Issei. However he heard Kiba who could still move his mouth shout, Issei. This array is continuously powered by that bishop. Try to take her down and I would be able to fight in the battle again, said Kiba but the bishop shouted, oh no. You won't she then cast a big fireball spell that was about to hit Kiba but Issei was able to block it from him just in time without getting caught in the array. The fireball mysteriously vanished once how in the dash, what did you do? Where did my spell go, asked the confused bishop, nice try. But it will not be that easy, said Issei and moved towards one of the bishops but he was blocked by both the staff user and the one called Swollen. Damn it, made contact with Issei. Give up. You can't defeat all of us, said the staff user. Never shouted Issei and moved towards both the staff and flame user and engaged them in battle. With Konako and Akeno. The pair had been setting up traps all over the woods in accordance with the plan. They had built underground trenches in accordance with the wishes of the president. It was then Akeno said, So Konako, you never said anything about your training with Master Naruto. How was he? Konako returned this question with another question, you did not say anything about your training. Yufufu, we exchanged passionate blows with each other. Our sweat glistened on our bare bodies due to the attacks we pulled. He was very aggressive you know, I only wish my heart was as prepared as my body to accept the full brunt of his big and manly. Forget I ever asked. Sadist said Konako with an evident blush on her face. Yufufufu, so cute. Said Akeno in a teasing manner. Konako stopped her conversation with Akeno and said, we can discuss this later. We have company. Era era so we have. Said Akeno and dodged an incoming spell fired from her side. She then noticed that both she and Konako were surrounded by four girls and the one that sent them the attack this way was a blonde haired bishop of Riser, Ravel Fenex who is also his sister. Era era it seems we are outnumbered here. You girls gave us a big surprise just now said Akeno firing four spells simultaneously at the four girls who cornered them. The girls dodged. Konako had already started engaging the enemies in close combat. She first tried to take out the close-ranged fighters while Akeno gave cover fire from the long-range ones. She took a quick step and surprised one of the girls by kicking her from behind. She moved towards another girl but she was stopped when one of Riser's knights engaged her with a sword. I, Ceres, I am a servant of Lord Riser and I shall bring honor and glory by defeating you in battle. Surrender said Ceres in a vainglorious manner. TCH. It had to be a knight said Konako and attacked her. The knight who called herself Ceres dodged Konako and lunged forward to slash her with her sword. Konako maintained her form and stayed at the same place. She sidestepped at the last moment catching her opponent by surprise. She then took advantage of the opening and punched Ceres in the stomach region making her fly through some trees. Konako used what Naruto had taught her. If she could not use speed then she had to use her opponent's speed to her advantage. This was what Naruto had taught her. She learned how to feint and use counter attacks on her opponent so that her attacks connect. She then turned towards one of the other girls who was a pawn and attacked her up front. The pawn took some distance dodging Konako's strike. She then started using her bow to attack Konako. However, Konako did not give her the chance. She moved forward and sought to strike the enemy but all of a sudden the Night Series came back to strike her from the side. Konako noticed her and blocked her attack. The bow user took this chance to take a shot at Konako. It was a successful hit. The shot was at Konako's dominant arm. Damn it. I got impulsive. Meanwhile, Akeno had her hands full trying to eliminate the evasive Ravel who continually fired fire spells at the black-haired beauty. Both of them used successive shots at each other. However, Akeno got careless and did not notice the last girl attack her from behind. When did she dash, thought Akeno but could not continue that line of thought as she had been blown away by one of the phoenix's wind spells. Akeno was blown away but was still able to regain her balance immediately. One of the girls who was upon thought of eliminating Akeno but could not do so as she got careless and Akeno fired a lightning spell at point blank range. The pawn was knocked out and eliminated. One pawn of Riser Fenex has been eliminated, announced a voice. Akeno then said with a small giggle, Era Era, it seems that only three of you are left. She then moved forward towards Ravel trying to eliminate the bishop. Ravel smiled and said, 
It seems that you are counting wrongly, Miss Heimjima. You count three, but I count four. Akeno narrowed her eyes at the statement and immediately dodged an explosion right beneath her foot. Akeno noticed that a purple haired girl had arrived. She then said, Oh. It seems Riser had finally sent his big guns. Well then, why don't we find who is the stronger queen, Miss Yobelina? Yobelina smiled and said, It has already been decided that I am the stronger of us from the beginning. Please give up, dear. Your master has caught the eye of my master and my master. Yobelina fired another explosion spell at Akeno and finished, always gets what he wants. Akeno smiled but one could find her becoming tense by the second as both Konako and she did not expect the bomb queen to arrive. However, she could find herself becoming more excited as her sadistic side was completely brought to light. With her hands emitting sparks of lightning, she said in a sweet and sadistic tone while licking her lips, Well, aren't you impatient? Why don't we find that out? I would like to see how shocking it would be for you to lose. Konako backed Akeno up by standing in front of her. She then made eye contact with Akeno. Akeno nodded her head. Well Miss Yubelina. It seems I need to take back my earlier statement. We may have to postpone our flight to a later date said Akeno and tried to escape the battle along with Konako. However the pair were stopped when Yubelina said, I am sorry Miss Akeno but Lord Riser has strictly ordered me to eliminate you first and eliminate you I shall. Akeno dodged their attacks while running away towards the old clubhouse. Yobelina narrowed her eyes and thought of Riser's orders mini flashback Yobelina, if what I think is right, then Rias is going to lay traps and use guerrilla tactics to get rid of us while we move in on their position. The most troublesome piece in her peerage is her queen. Get rid of her as soon as you can. Back to present Yobelina saw that Riser was dead serious in this game and was thinking a lot of things through. She did not want to fail her master. So she followed Akeno however cut off Konako's retreat by firing an explosion at her retreat route. She then said to the others, you three. Take care of the rook. I will deal with Rias's queen myself. The three pieces of Riser's peerage nodded and engaged Konako. Now Konako was in a pinch as she was alone. Konako wanted her and Akeno to escape together and now that plan went haywire as she was separated from Akeno. Ravel then fired a flame spell at Konako which Konako narrowly dodged. She then was attacked by Ceres and the pawn from both her sides. She jumped high dodging their strikes but could not defend herself mid-air from one of Ravel's flame spells. She was blown away by the spell and landed on a nearby rock. She then got up from the rock and looked behind for a moment. Her thoughts were no longer on the fight but on the rock. She thought of the time Naruto had trained her when the same thing happened. Flashback Konako and Naruto had been sparring the entire day, no to be exact, Naruto's shadow clone and she were sparring the entire day. Naruto came at her with inhuman speeds and attacked her with the rod he used for her senjutsu training. Konako had asked him, why are you not training me to master senjutsu? I have a better chance of winning if I could master it asked Konako with an annoyed look. He had been asking her to dodge the rod of his and Naruto doesn't pull any punches with regards to hurting her with the rod. Her body has been filled with bruises all over. Naruto looked at her with a stoic face and said, You have come far in Senjutsu if you ask me but you still cannot master it even if you were given 200 years. It's best we concentrate on your other skills before we move on to it. It's so obvious that you are incompetent in them from the way you fight. I wonder if it is because of your deadbeat master. Konako who heard that turned silent. She then attacked Naruto with all her rage and shouted at him, You take that back. She punched and kicked at him from all directions but Naruto just kept dodging her attacks. Fifteen minutes had passed and she still hadn't landed a single blow. Naruto who kept flying all around her said, Is that all you can do? You are absolutely pathetic. Shut up said Konako. It is true. Look at yourselves. You attacked me from all fronts and yet could not land a single blow at me. Does that not explain your incompetence? Does that not explain that your master had been wasting time trying to train you? I said shut up, said Konako punching Naruto at unimaginable speeds but Naruto just caught her fist and threw her away. Konako flew through some trees breaking them before she finally got embedded a hard boulder. She walked out of the boulder while coughing out some blood and fell on her knees. Naruto landed beside her and said, get up. We still have more training to do. Konako used all her grit and might to get up. She then looked at him with impotent rage. Naruto did not falter at the rage shown and gave her a stoic look. He said, lesson number one, never lose your cool even in a tough situation. 
Don't let your enemies drivel get to you as they are trying to goad you into doing exactly what they want. Lesson number two, be always on guard. Do not relax for even a single moment in battle as the enemy is given a chance to strike. Take these two lessons to heart. He then continued, when I said about your master's incompetence in not properly assessing your strengths and weaknesses, I was not joking. You clearly lack speed. You may have the strength of 10 elephants in each of your punches but none of them mean anything if your opponent is faster than you. Training is the process by which your strengths increase and your weaknesses are removed gradually. Your master's incompetence was shown when she only asked you to concentrate on your strength. Your incompetence was shown when you lacked the ability to think for yourself on your weakness. Konako heard what Naruto said and pondered on it. He may have been over the top with the way he treated her but she could see his point. While she was thinking, Naruto spoke taking her away from those thoughts. Finally I have one last thing to say. Learn to listen. Think before you react. Do not be impulsive. Now then. Take some rest and we will continue later on, said Naruto and moved away however he was stopped by Konako, wait. Naruto turned back and waited for Konako to speak. His face was still stoic and it lacked any form of warmth. Before you go, tell me why do you think that I could not master Senjutsu even if I trained for another 200 years, asked Konako with slight curiosity. Naruto did not say anything and turned back. He then said, it's because you have already mastered it a long time ago. Konako asked him, what do you mean? Naruto did not respond but vanished in a puff of smoke. Back to present, I finally understand what you meant master. Thought Konako. She then ran deeper into the woods. Ravel who spotted her said, after her. She's weakened and alone. Now's our chance. However, be wary of any traps she may spring. Ceres and the pawn nodded their heads and all three ran towards Konako. With Rias and Asia, Asia had been tense about the battle. She had been waiting with Rias who had he head on her lap and slowly brushing her hair. She then heard Rias. It will be fine Asia. The others will not be defeated so easily said Rias trying to reassure Asia. Asia nodded her head and said with a smile, I know they won't be but a part of me still wants to know if they are safe. Rias smiled at her. However, she started frowning all of a sudden. She said, get ready Asia. We have some pests outside. Asia nodded her head and started chanting multiple barrier spells. Rias then carried Asia on her back while she was chanting to one of the hidden rooms. She then used the surveillance hidden in the old school building to check out the disturbance she felt. She then felt her blood boil when she saw who it was. It was Riser along with one another. Rias along with one rook. Rias thought, what the dash? Why is he here? He should be trying to play it safe. She then thought, damn it. I did not expect this, calm down Rias. Try to think of a plan. She then looked at Asia and said, Asia, there has been a change in plans. Set up a barrier around the entire floor as quick as you can. Asia who heard that said, are right. She then said through the communicator, guys, there has been a change of plan. With Kiba and Issei earlier, Kiba was still immobilized from the paralysis array. Issei was still in a pinch facing both Swollen and the staff user. It was then the pair heard an announcement, one pawn of Riser Fenex has been eliminated. Issei thought, seems things are going a little slow on Akeno's and Konako's end. I am a little worried. Need to finish here fast Issei then shouted out, alright. Time to up my game. He then attacked both of them with more speed and strength than he ever did before. Fast though Swollen who could not dodge all attacks he's much stronger than before. Was he holding back? Why, thought the staff user. She was able to pick up on the way they fought and she did not like where this was headed. The pair of bishops were launching all forms of attacks at Issei who dodged them like crazy with proper movements. He's not some newbie pawn fresh off the market. He moves like some kind of expert. It's almost as if. Thought Swollen and attacked Issei from behind but was immediately blocked by a red gauntlet. He's predicting our attacks, thought Swollen whose eyes widened at the implications. Boost 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 Issei thought, chance. He then aimed at the bishops and shouted, Boosted gear, dragon shot version 2. Multiple lasers flew towards the bishop. The bishop was unable to dodge the attack as she felt the full brunt of the volley of shots. One bishop of Riser Fenex has been eliminated, announced the voice. Damn it, said the staff user who moved towards Issei who looked exhausted after the previous attack. She was almost successful in her attack but was blocked by a wall of swords. Thanks for the assist, Kiba, said Issei. 
Now we only have to get rid of these two. Said Issei but noticed four other girls move towards them. Two of them carried chainsaws while the other two were pugilists wearing maid outfits. Never mind. We have got you surrounded. Give up said the staff user. Damn it. That battle expended a lot of my energy. Plan B, asked Issei Plan B said Kiba and nodded his head. Issei nodded and both of them moved in to attack the pair of knight and rook but the attack turned out to be a feint. Both of them jumped over the pair of girls by using their shoulders as a push pad and reached for the entrance. Don't let them get away, said Swollen but narrowed her eyes at the way the pair of guys grinned when they left the place. It's a trap, thought Swollen and looked around immediately at the walls surrounding them. She noticed a couple of explosives on the main support walls. Shit. Girls. We need to get out. We were fooled. It's a trap, shouted Swollen. All of them moved towards the door but it was too late as Issei who was outside the gymnasium snapped his fingers and said along with Kiba, boom baby. On cue, the gymnasium suffered an explosion and collapsed on the girls inside. With Konako, where is she? Find her quickly so we can go assist Yobelina, said Ravel however, she did not say another word as she was quickly knocked out by Konako who sneak attacked her. She used her strength to knock out Ravel's neck knocking her out and then kicked her out. Why you? shouted both of the girls. They then both attacked Konako together. Konako dodged their attacks and once again went into hiding within the woods. Both girls went back to back and covered range in all directions. Ceres said, be careful. She seems faster than she did before. Konako then appeared right in front of her. Ceres shouted out, there. Don't let her out of your sight. She then attacked Konako with her sword. The pawn behind Ceres used her bow to target Konako from a range. Konako dodged the arrow from the pawn and lunged at Ceres. She caught Ceres' sword and gave waste. Ceres flew away due to the impact while thinking, she's way stronger now. What the hell happened? However, she was able to regain her balance. Even then Konako did not give her time to think and quickly eliminated her with a chop to her neck. She then moved towards the pawn to hit her but Ravel fired a flame spell at her, Sea of Flames. She thought that Konako would have gotten a direct hit with that and that would have stopped Konako but unfortunately, it did not as Konako jumped through the flames and punched Ravel knocking her out. The only remaining pawn of the group was scared. She saw Konako knocking the knight and the bishop of the group in less than two minutes. So she tried to make an escape so that she can join Yubelina but Konkyo had got to her immediately. One pawn, one knight, and one bishop of Riser Fenex eliminated. Konako thought, better get a move on and help Akeno. With Issei and Kiba, alright. Now that's settled, let's get back, said Issei Kiba nodded but suddenly a spell hit his back and Kiba took the full brunt of his attack. Issei shouted, Kiba. He then noticed that the swollen had survived the collapse but she too was knocked out as the exhaustion got to her after she performed the spell. Damn it. Stay with me man, said Issei trying to lift Kiba. However Kiba shook his head, I am too exhausted Issei. It's over for me. Stick to the plan. You need to retreat. When this one for the team said Kiba and disappeared into particles of light. I will, said Issei and on cue the voice announced, one rook and five pawns of Riser Fenex and one knight of Rius. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Said Issei and went back to the old clubhouse. It was then Issei heard via the communicator. Guys. There has been a change of plans. Come back to base as quickly as you can said Rius. What happened president, asked Issei. Rius said, Riser made a move and sneaked to the base along with one of his rooks. Issei asked, wait what? But I thought you said that he will most likely play it safe. It was then Konako spoke, the flaming chicken distracted us with his chicken squad while he moves forward and tries to get rid of Rius. Issei said, damn it. Don't worry president, I am on my way. Rius said, alright Issei but come back soon, Asia cannot maintain the barrier for long. Konako said, I and Akeno got in a bit of a pinch, we separated and Akeno is battling with Riser's queen. I took care of some other small fries including Flaming Chicken Jr. Rius said, good. Ake dash the queen of Rius Gremory has been eliminated. Damn it. Akeno's out. Issei, I need you to come back as quickly as you can. Konako. Try to hold back Riser's queen until Issei arrives. Roger. Gremory have been eliminated kick to her, moments earlier. With Akeno and Yobelina, Akeno who saw that Yobelina was following her smiled. She then gave a surprise attack at Yobelina, 
lightning strike. However, Yobelina just dodged the attack rather easily. She then said, Why don't you fight me without running, Queen of Gremory? Akeno said, Whoever said I was running? Yobelina narrowed her eyes at the comment and saw what she meant. She was lead into a trap as a barrier was erected when they entered the area. She thought, it should be fine. Once I eliminate her, Lord Riser can get my back up. She then used her sacred gear to cast explosions at Akeno. Akeno dodged those attacks and gave lightning spells of her own. She also combined a few basic flame spells. One of her hits finally got Yobelina. She was able to corner Yobelina with some of her sneak attacks. She asked, do you give up? Yobelina did not say anything but took out a vial. Akeno narrowed her eyes and immediately fired a lightning shot at Yobelina. She then laughed, ah, ah no tears. I knew you would have one on you. Yobelina did not say anything as they continued to battle while on the run until Akeno had finally stopped. Both of them were tired out but Akeno had taken more damage than Yobelina did as her explosions were able to disperse the static charge around her eliminating most of Akeno's attacks except the ones given by surprise. Yobelina said, why don't you give up, Heimjima? Akeno smiled and said, you know well why I cannot do that, Bomb Queen. Yobelina said, so be it, I will finish you off with one final blow. Akeno thought, now she then activated the magic array underneath. Yobelina noticed and thought, what the dash she tried to get away but it was too late as she was stuck. She then understood that the array was a quicksand array and was made so as to trap her. Clever move. But you realize that this will not help you much in this regard. Your lightning magic will not be effective against me. Akeno laughed, foo 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 foo, under normal circumstances, yes you may be correct. But right now you stand on the ground captured. And the explosions had caused enough heat to disperse some of the water in the lake nearby. Tell me what happens when clouds form in the sky. Yobelina narrowed her eyes, positive charge gets accumulated and the attraction towards the negatively charged ground form. Her eyes widened in shock when Akeno shouted, not too late to give up now, Miss Yobelina. However Yobelina did not respond and tried to get away from the quicksand by using her explosion to disperse the sand but she was too deep enough to have any effect. Akeno cast her magic, Lightning Wrath. A bolt of huge lightning had impacted the ground erasing everything leaving a crater of 20 meters in diameter. Akeno noticed her handiwork but she still did not hear the announcement. She then suddenly noticed Yobelina appear from her side. Akeno dodged her attack. She shouted, wait. How did you survive that? Yobelina showed her an empty vial. Akeno widened her eyes in surprise, she had two all this time. However, her realization was too late as Yobelina had already beaten her with her explosion magic. Akeno then thought to the time Naruto trained her. Flashback Naruto was fighting with Akeno exchanging blows with each other. Akeno was firing all kinds of spells at him. However, Naruto just dodged her attacks. He did not even try to attack her not even once. She was growing frustrated by the second until she could take it no longer. She shouted out, why aren't you attacking me? Naruto just told her calmly, because you are not worth it. Akeno was enraged. She shouted, what? Naruto said, are you deaf, girl? Because you are not worth it. Akeno was truly pissed off now. She shouted, you will pay for what you said. She then attacked Naruto multiple times with various spells over and over again without pause. However, none of her attacks reached him. She tried to use new strategies but none worked against him. Soon exhaustion found its way to her body and she fell on the ground panting. While she was panting, Naruto came near her and said, is that all you can do? Akeno said while wheezing, Fu, CK, yo you, Naruto said, I would if I could but then again I am not interested right now. Akeno then slowly regained her breath and asked, why did you not attack me? Naruto replied with a stoic face and said, as I said, you are not worth it. Akeno asked with pleading eyes, why? Naruto simply ignored her and gave her an answer with the same look, it's because you were not fighting me seriously. Akeno argued, but I dash Naruto interrupted her and said, no you did not. You didn't use all your magic on me. You barely used your powers. Akeno remained silent. Naruto then saw that the sun was setting and said, that is enough for today. I want you to understand this Akeno. You are only helping the enemy by holding back. If you are going to let Rias down by not overcoming your hate and spite for your own powers, then you may very well quit. Akeno who heard that remained silent. 
Naruto then walked away but was interrupted by Akeno who said, I won't use my powers but I will not let Rias down. If you think that I can only win by using all my powers, then I will prove you wrong. Naruto did not say anything. He then slowly walked away leaving Akeno to recuperate while laying down on the ground. Back to present it seems I was wrong all this time. Forgive me Rias. The queen of Rias Gremory has been eliminated, with Rias and Asia, the two of them were currently saving up whatever time they can so that Konako and Issei can arrive to help them out in the battle. Rias did her best and was able to take out the Rook Isabella rather quickly. Asia had her barrier up which protected them both. The barrier was in the shape of a pyramid as instructed by Naruto. Flashback Rias and Asia were training together mostly. Since Rias was the only one who could instruct Asia on basic barrier spells. While Asia was improving her healing aside from the barriers. Rias was improving on her commanding skills. Right now they were facing Naruto together. Asia had the barrier up while Rias attacked Naruto from the outside while retreating inside to regain her energy. After a while, they switched and Asia mostly dodged Naruto's attacks while using some basic counters he used a couple of Raisinons to improve on it. He said, that's enough. Now then Asia, what do you think is the perfect shape for a barrier? I don't know master. Naruto replied, I want you to think. The shape you create makes a lot of difference when you create barriers. I want you to think on it. Yes, master. Naruto then turned to Rias and said, Rias, I need to speak with you alone. Rias nodded her head and asked Asia to go on and that she will catch up later. Naruto then asked, tell me truly. Do you want to marry Riser? Rias said, no. That should be obvious. Naruto narrowed his eyes and said, don't talk back to me. Either say yes or no. Rias bit her lip and said, no sir. Naruto then added, if that is so, then why are you not training properly? Rias thought for a moment and wanted to refute but Naruto continued, I did not say that you were not training. I said you were not training properly and that one word makes a lot of difference. When I was training the others I noticed that you only made them concentrate on their strengths and not on their weaknesses. This is a bad way to train. Working as a team is a good attitude but for improvement, one must work alone. He or she must identify their weaknesses alone so that they can improve. Rias who heard that said, I think what you are saying makes sense. Then what is my weakness? Naruto said, you already know them. You are just not looking. Rias who heard that wanted to ask further but Naruto stopped her by raising his hand. He then said, I will give you one weakness you are overlooking. He then motioned her attention to a chessboard. He said, why don't we play a game? Rias nodded her head and they then started playing. They were playing for a while and finally, only a few pieces remained. Naruto then moved the queen to checkmate the king he said, checkmate. Rias shook her head and said, illegal move. Naruto said, why do you say that? Rias said, because you moved your queen in a knight's way. Naruto then said, however I still got you in the end didn't I? Rias shook her head and said, it does not count. Naruto said, but it does. Tell me Rias. If this was a real battle do you think you would have time to argue with the enemy about an unfair method they employed? Rias who heard that turned silent. Naruto continued, I have said what needs to be said. Think out of the box. It is the winner that decides the rules, not the loser. Use any means necessary. If you don't then your opponent might. Naruto then walked away leaving Rias to ponder in her thoughts. Back to present, Rias was protecting herself from Riser's attacks. She did a hit and defense strategy while taking cover and exploiting the timing to hit Riser while he was attacking them. Riser said, give up darling. Riser promises that he will show you a very good time. Rias replied, in your dreams Riser. Riser then threw a flame spell at the barrier, however, the barrier did not give in. Asia did her very best to hold on. Riser did not stop and threw spells continually trying to corner the two. He thought, her magic is bound to run out sometime. It would take a lot of magic to hold a barrier as strong as that. His predictions came through as the barrier start to crumble. Rias then shouted, stop. 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 I get it Riser. I, I, I am not strong. You can defeat me easily, so please just stop it. Riser who heard that smirked and thought, finally Riser stopped his attacks but still maintained distance. He said, it's alright Rias dear, Riser is happy that you finally understand that it is inevitable to beat me. Rias then fell on the ground in despair while Asia was behind her. 
Asia shouted, we can still do this president. Please don't give up. Rias didn't say anything but have a look of despair. She thought, forgive me, everyone. With Issei, and Konako, Issei was running to rescue Rias and was going back to the clubhouse at full speed. He thought, damn it. Faster Issei. Faster. You need to save the president. Issei used his boosted gear to amplify his magic and thus his speed and stopped at nothing until he came to see the fight between Konako and Yubelina. Konako was holding her own against the queen who fired an explosion from her sacred gear. Issei who saw this took a sneak attack at Yubelina. Boosted gear, dragon shot. He fired a laser beam that found its way towards the queen blowing her away. He then said, Konako. Are you alright? Konako nodded her head and said, I'm fine. Issei said, good. We need to leave. The president and Asia are still in danger. Konako nodded but her eyes widened immediately and she tackled Issei dodging an explosion. She then heard a voice, my, my, did the little munchkins think that I was that easy to defeat. Konako then saw that Yubelina was getting back up. She said, Issei. Move on. Rias needs you. Pulverize the flaming chicken. I will take care of this one. Issei said, no. She's too damn dash, Konako said, go. I have a plan. I can take care of myself. Issei who saw the determined look in Konako's eyes said, you take care of yourself. Issei then started running towards the club room. Yobelenu said, I am afraid I can't let you do that. She then fired an explosion spell at Issei which he dodged narrowly. She then prepared to fire the next attack but was interrupted by Konako who kicked at her from the side. She was then subjected to a multitude of kicks and punches. While she dodged most of them, some did find their way to her shoulder and hip and thus she was blown away once again. She said after she coughed a few drops of blood, I am starting to hate you now. Konako said, bring it on. They then engaged in battle for a while. Konako deployed a continuous flurry of attacks not giving Yubelina the opportunity to cast her spells. However, not all of them were successful as Yubelina was able to counter some of the attacks making Konako take damage. The battle went on and they slowly moved towards the club room. Yubelina who had enough of the battle thought, I better get to Lord Riser fast. He may be immortal but even he could not escape exhaustion from magic. If that pawn of theirs joins the battle, then there is a chance they may just win. Konako said, if you are thinking of joining their battle now that you are near to King Douchebag then you can forget it. Yobelina said, oh? Why so? Are you that confident in defeating me? Konako shook her head and said, it's not confidence, it's about facts. Yobelina laughed and said, and what fact is that? Konako said, the fact that we are nowhere near the club room. Yobelina laughed and said, ha 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 ha. What jokes are you making? We are dash however her laughing stopped when the old school building in the distance faded away to form more forests. She was stunned and said, when did you? Konako said, right after Issei left. Just to be sure. I cast a Yujitsu spell. Yobelina shouted, it won't make a difference. Once I finish you I can still make it in time. Konako didn't say anything but just stood there. Yobelina thought that she had given up and prepared a spell. But all of a sudden a huge array came up from underneath. She thought, what the dash. Konako said, it seems Akeno still hadn't made use of this trap. Good. She then added, as I said before. I was never confident about defeating you alone. So I used a contingency. Konako thought, seems this is the end of the line for me. You are the one who can help her now, Issei. They were both then captured in a blinding light. Yobelina screamed while Konako remained silent. Once the light faded, both of them were seen to be knocked out. They then faded into light particles. One rook of Rias Gremory and the queen of Riser Fenex have been eliminated. With Issei, Issei was making his very best to approach the club room as soon as he can. He thought, almost there. I need to go in quickly. He heard the announcement and thought, seems Konako is out of the battle. At least the queen is gone which means that the Dushabag is alone now and we outnumber him 3 to 1. He then saw the club room getting closer. He heard the sounds of battle and then an abrupt scream. He feared the worst and made a huge jump and landed at the scene of battle. He shouted, President. I'm here to save you. Where's the dash? He then stopped midway through his sentence to look at the sight before him. He saw Rias standing near downed Riser who was crying. Just opposite to the scene he imagined. He then saw Asia looking at him with a blank look. 
He heard Rhea say with a smile. Hey there Issei. Riser here was just giving up. He was just so stupefied at the scene that he could not but let out a voice. Huh. Riser was crying while saying, please. Please, forgive me. Huh. Rhea smiled at him and said, it's alright Riser. Everything will be fine. You gave up, didn't you? Why don't you just say it again? Hyuyan. <laughs> Riser nodded his head, I surrender. A voice was then heard Riser Fenex has yielded the battle. Lady Rhea's grammar is, therefore, the winner of the raiding game. Issei who heard that just shouted, what the actual fuck just happened? Issei looking at the scene before him shouted out, what the actual fuck just happened? Rias who heard him said back, Issei. Language. Issei immediately shut his mouth and said, yes president, he looked at the sight before him. Riser was still kneeling over like a bitch and crying. However, he was holding his hands in front of his stomach and was saying, Mio Bambino. Issei who heard that asked Asia, Asia, can you please tell me what happened? Why is Riser writhing like a wounded soldier and crying, my little boy? Isa who heard that blushed and said nothing. Issei asked once again, Asia. Asia still blushed and stuttered, well, Rias and I were getting cornered by Riser when Rias said that she was ready to give up or I thought she was. Flashback Asia who saw Rias falling to the ground in despair shouted, we can still do this president. Please don't give up. Asia thought, is this the end? Is this how everything ends? After all the time we spent together training? Why? Why? She then saw Rias with a determined expression moving forward towards Riser. Riser licked his lips and said, we are going to have a lot of fun, my dear. I am going to have a hell of a time having you as my bride. It was then that they heard an announcement, one rook of Rias Gremory and the queen of Riser Fenex have been eliminated. Riser shouted out, so Yobella Nadir has been defeated, is it? It doesn't matter now, does it Rias? Why don't you come closer to Riser and give him a victory kiss? Asia saw Rias getting closer and still in despair. She shouted out, President. Please think of all our friends. Akeno, Kiba, Konako. Do you think they want their sacrifices to be in vain, we still have Issei. Please Rias. However, Rias just ignored her cries and went towards Riser. Asia closed her eyes as she did not want to see the sight. She started praying, Oh Lord ouch in heaven. Please save my president. However, she then heard something ridiculous. She then heard the shout of Riser, what the what the hell is this? She opened her eyes to see Rias standing before Riser smirking while Riser just stood there jerking his body but it seemed as if he cannot do so. Why cannot I move my body? Rias sighed and said, it was a contingency spell I made in advance. I thought of waiting until Yobelina showed up if she had defeated Konako. However, you had me cornered so I had to move in advance and take a chance of whether Konako would win. It seems my luck was good after all. Riser tried moving out of it but could not do so. Rias then said, you don't need to bother trying to break out of the spell. It requires a lot of time to prepare but once it is deployed even a mid ultimate class devil could not break out of it. Riser who heard that shouted, I call foul play. You made a move against me after you had given up. Rias who heard that smirked, given up? Pardon me, but when did you hear me utter the words give up with the intent implied? I merely asked for you to stop as I admitted that you are more powerful than me. I did not give up in any form or manner. It was your naive and arrogant thinking that made you assume it. Riser who heard that was even more enraged and this time tried to throw dirt at her family. He said, you still used unfair means. Have you no honor as a gremory or as a high class devil? Rias who heard that laughed outright, ha ha ha. Can you hear yourself, Riser? Honor? Excuse me but the last time I checked I was still a devil and so were you. Was honor a word in the dictionary of the devils? We don't have honor, we have deceit. Well besides that, it is true that some honor is required to be shown among the new generation as we are far more advanced than the old ones in many ways. However, give me a good reason why I should show honor to an opponent who showed none to me. Riser said, how dare you? I was fair dash, Rias did not let him finish and said, oh, you think you were fair, were you? That's wonderful. Then, let me ask you this. What fairness did you show? Fairness in bullying the weak? Fairness in fighting against a less experienced enemy you outnumber? Fairness in giving a choice to the enemy by providing them only two weeks to prepare? Well if that is your definition of fairness, then I don't think the means I used to capture you is not so unfair after all. 
Riser who heard that turned silent. He had no retort to that comeback by Rias and just spat on the floor. Rias who saw that didn't have a change in facial expression. She said, well then Riser, this is it. Are you ready to give up? Me, the great Riser Fenex giving up? You can only dream about Riser giving up Rias. I know that this binding spell will consume a lot of magic energy to maintain. Once the spell wears off, Riser will be free and he will take care of you real good. Rias who heard that gave a devious smile. She said, you are right. This spell has a time limit of only 15 minutes of which 5 minutes are already over but aren't you forgetting something? Rias dealt with Riser's confusion by saying, you are still my prisoner in this period. Which means. She then lit up a ball of destruction from her hands. She went toward Riser until she was one step near him and whispered in his ear. I can return all the pain and suffering you caused me for years in this 10 minutes. She then shoved the ball of destruction up his manhood. Riser immediately screamed like a little bitch. Once that was over, Rias gave him minute to recover his mind and regenerate his balls. He heard Riser shout, why you dash however, he was not given the chance to speak again when another ball of destruction found its way up to his balls. He screamed once again. Rias said, sorry, I don't want to destroy your behind as my master has some plans for it. So I can only target your testicles. Riser who heard that said, pee please. Stop, it hurts. Rias gave him an evil smile and said, sorry darling, I can't do that. She then continued to torture Riser's balls till the 10 minute mark. Back to present Issei who heard the story from Asia's mouth was stunned. His first reaction when he heard the story was to cover his balls with his hands and think, the president is real scary. If there was any place you should not, nay, must not target in a man, it is his balls. Kicking a guy's balls was already painful enough but destroying it and making it regenerate multiple times? Nuts. Even Issei felt sympathy for the poor chap who had to face this torture. He actually went forward to Riser and said, it's over brother. You no longer need to face the pain anymore. To his surprise Riser actually cried out like a pitiful little girl and said, Shank you. Shank you. I am sure sure you. Issei actually consoled the guy, shhhh, it's alright brother, it's over. The demon's magic is over. He then heard a voice from behind, Issei. He looked at an angry Rias who had another ball of destruction in her hand. He heard her say, so not only are you consorting with the enemy but also defaming your master as a demon, are you? Issei who heard that paled and said, me? Consorting with this bastard? You must be joking president. He then proceeded to kick the downed man's balls once again eliciting a cry from Riser. He said, see. He heard Riser whisper, traitor. Issei gave Riser a look that said sorry and thought, sorry mate. But I don't want to face the same punishment as you did. I don't want to be neutered yet. Rias saw what Issei did and smiled. She then went forward to hug the man and said, it's alright, I will forgive you for what you said. Besides, we won didn't we? Issei who heard that gave a sigh of relief and smiled, yeah we did. However I was not able to go all out. Rias who heard that smiled and said, it's fine Issei. We have a lot more rating games to win. This one is just the start. Asia then joined in on the hug and said, that's right we won. They then heard a voice say, since the match has been decided, all participants will be teleported out of the dimension right now. They all then disappeared from the dimension in particles of light leaving the cold and lonely wind to be the only presence in the sub-dimension. Later, Rias and her gang were attending a party for celebrating their win the next evening. Sertsks had arranged it to celebrate his little sister's first winning in a raiding game even if it was an unofficial one. It was a grand party with various devils dressed for the occasion. Drinks and food were served by the waiters in proper uniform. Issei was having a hard time communicating with the various devils. He followed Kiba's instructions and just said everything with a smile even if they were insulted by most of the devils. The only devils that weren't arrogant in their claim as high-class devils were few like Sana, Sererog, and a devil called Sikvera. Issei then asked Kiba, is this what you guys deal with every time you attend a party? Kiba gave a wry smile and answered, yes. Although we usually stay in a group then be alone but that's not possible as we are the main stars of this show. Issei said, that's true. Look at Konako and Akeno, they are in the limelight. They saw Konako and Akeno being surrounded by the high class devils. However, the ones that surrounded them were more male than female. They were asked various questions but most of them were about their personal life. However, 
both Akeno and Konako refused to answer them completely and just gave vague answers to not sound rude. However, some of them were also genuine praises in their battle to which they kindly responded. It was then Issei noticed something, hey, is it just me or does Akeno seem sad? Kiba said, she has been like that ever since yesterday. I noticed it when we were talking yesterday. Issei asked, has anyone tried talking to her? Kiba said, Rias said she did but she wouldn't say what happened, just that everything is alright now. Issei said, okay. He then asked, speaking of Rias, where is she now? Kiba responded, she is with the Fenex family. Seems her father wanted to set some things straight between the two families so that their relationship doesn't strain. Issei didn't understand what Kiba was talking about. He then heard a voice say, what he means Issei is that the Fenex and Grammary families have been thick friends and they don't want this little fiasco to end their proper relationship. Issei immediately turned at the voice and found Naruto in a waiter's uniform. He was having a plate in his hands along with some drinks. He heard Issei and Kiba say, Mas Naruto just put up his ring finger on his lips and said, SHHHH Issei and Kiba shut their mouths before Issei whispered in a frantic manner, What are you doing here? Do you want to get busted? Naruto snorted and then said with a smile, If you say it and act like that you are only making it seem more obvious. Relax. Everything is alright. However, both Kiba and Issei's state of mind were too busy to be relaxed. Kiba said, How did you get here in the first place? Naruto grinned and said, I got into the underworld with the help of a friend. After then I took some time to get used to the place and infiltrated this place. You would be surprised how lax the security in the area is and even more surprising is the fact that none of the devils still haven't sensed that I am a human yet. Issei then said, but why are you here? Naruto replied, oh no reason. Just came here to do some business and give you guys a message. Issei and Kiba had no words to the daredevil nature of their master. They knew he was powerful but to infiltrate a party held by the most powerful devil in the underworld without facing any problems was too damn epic. He sort of felt like a character from a spy movie. Naruto then said, well, you guys did a great job on the battlefield. Especially you Issei, you were way better in the field than I thought you would be. Issei rubbed his hands behind his back and said, thanks, master. All that torture you put me through had finally paid off I guess. Naruto nodded and said, Evidently Naruto then said, well if you would excuse me, boys, I believe I have somewhere to be right now. Enjoy your victory. They then noticed Naruto blend in with the crowds. They easily lost him even when they kept their eyes on him. Issei asked, Kiba. Yes, Issei. What business do you think the master came to take care of? I don't know Issei but I am not going to ask him either. It's better that way. Issei agreed. With Akeno, Akeno was now on the balcony away from the rest of her group. She was standing alone thinking about the battle. It was then she heard a voice, would you like to have drink milady? Oh now that I think about it you are still underage, aren't you? So no drinks for you missy. Akeno immediately turned and was stunned to find Naruto standing there. She then gave a smile and asked, what are you doing here? Naruto said, well I came here for a lot of things and one of them being, to talk with you. Looking at you now. I think you have some things you have to say to me, don't you? Akeno smiled wryly. She asked, am I that easy to read? Naruto nodded and gave a very blunt answer, yes. So say what you want to say, I am all ears. Akeno sighed and said, I am sorry for not following your words. You were right. I was being foolish enough to believe that I can win by using only my own strength. If I had done that then Rias wouldn't have had to resort to dirty tactics to win the raiding game. Naruto who heard that was silent for a moment and then laughed. Akeno who noticed that frowned and asked angrily, why are you laughing? Naruto finished his laughter and said, it is the fact that you would apologize when you have no need to what makes me laugh. Akeno looked confused. Naruto continued with a serious face, the only one you had to apologize to is Rias, not me and by the looks of it you have already done that. I am just a guide, I can only show you the way. It is up to you whether you want to traverse that path or not. Akeno was hurt at the cold and apathetic words Naruto spoke and looked down. However, she then heard him say, Besides, it is me that should be apologizing to you Akeno. Akeno now turned up to find Naruto smiling. She was once again confused. Naruto who noticed that asked, You don't realize, do you? 
It was true that you did not heed my words and didn't use your full power but it is also true that it was due to your efforts of weakening Yubelina and creating the trap that Konako used to defeat her that won Rias her victory. In a way, you have proven me wrong. Akeno who heard that was stunned at the logic. She then said, but Dash Naruto stopped her and said, no buts. I am more of a boobies man. Akeno deadpanned at the sudden joke which ruined the atmosphere. Naruto noticed that his joke didn't work and started sweating. He then pointed behind her and said, look a shooting star, Naruto was sweating even further and started to make up a lot of things that ended in a blabber. Akeno noticing his uncomfortableness and frantic behavior finally chuckled. The chuckle started to turn into a peal of laughter. Naruto who saw that gave a short sigh of relief and then smiled. It was then he said, so feeling better now. Akeno who had that laugh said, yeah. Much better. Though I still feel that I am still could have done better. Naruto said, that's good. People often say to forget the past and look for the future but that's wrong. One should look forward to the future, that is true but one should not forget the past rather they should always keep them in the back of their mind so that they don't repeat the same errors they made. Akeno who heard that understood the wisdom of the words and smiled, still you are a terrible comic master. Naruto who heard that said, I try to be good you know but it just never works. Akeno said, there is a thing called timing. Naruto had a rain cloud over his head as he crouched down. He then felt something soft on his back. He then heard Akeno say, so you are a boobies man, are you master? Oh shit. I shouldn't have said that. Akeno then said, so how does mine feel? Naruto gave a rating, meh, a B plus. Doesn't have that oomph feeling with the clothes in the way. My my, then do you want to go somewhere private and give them a proper rating, asked Akeno whispering the latter part in his ear. Naruto deadpanned and said, no thanks. I ain't into little kids. Akeno said, you say that but you did eyeball my breasts when you saw them the first time. Naruto responded, and you were eyeballing my crotch when we were taking breaks during training. You did a good job hiding the gaze but you couldn't escape my senses. But I wasn't trying to hide my gaze. Naruto then asked, then why did you try to look away whenever I turned towards you? Akeno had no response to that. Naruto then turned to Akeno and separated from her. He said, nice try brat. It would have worked on anyone else but I am much more experienced in teasing. Try after a hundred years and you may get a reaction. Akeno just smiled at him. She then said, thank you. Naruto gave her a smile of his own. Akeno then chatted with Naruto on some inconsequential matters for a while before Naruto suddenly froze for a second. He then had a mischievous smile. He said, well, it seems my business in the underworld is done. Say hi to Rias for me and tell her that I am proud of her. She didn't get a chance to ask where he was going as he had turned to smoke. She then thought that oh well. Might as well rejoin the party. Rias's meeting with the Fenex must have ended. She then went inside and spotted Rias. She saw that Rias was truly happy for once in a long time. After all, she had just regained her freedom. Rias saw Okeno and motioned her towards her. Akeno smiled and went towards her. She then saw that Issei, Konako, and Kiba had joined their conversation circle. Now that everyone was here Akeno asked, everything went alright with the Fenex family. Rias said, you would be surprised. Not only did they not make a fuss. They even thanked me for beating some sense into Riser. They think that this defeat will be some sort of lesson to him. Akeno who heard that was relieved. She then said, that's good news. However, there is still the matter of the elders and the rest of the devil houses. Rias then said, that's why you would be surprised. The rest of the devil houses didn't make a fuss about it. I noticed that it was unusual and asked Sertsk if he did something and he said that someone had placed some incriminating documents on the families of the elders that were pushing my marriage with Riser on his desk this morning. He also said that there was a note along with it saying what he needed to do with them. Akeno said, so blackmail. Rias said, obviously. These elders are too powerful to be removed easily however their influence can wane over time. Though I wonder who gave the documents. Akeno and the two other boys knew who it was and were about to tell Rias when they saw a guard barge in. The devil nobility who saw the way the guard barged in wasn't pleased. One of the devils who were more vocal than the others shouted at the guard, how dare you barge into Lord Lucifer's party unannounced. Do you wish for death soldier? The soldier who was terrified responded, Forgive me my lords and ladies but I have an urgent message for Lord Fenex from his estate and I had no other option but to come in this way. 
Some of the more empathetic devils understood his plight while the others just snorted and thought, impudent low class. Lord Fenex who saw the guard asked, so what message do you have for me? The guard said, please sir. In private. Lord Fenex complied and he went along with the guard some distance away when the guard whispered in his ears. The guard then gave a note to Lord Fenex. Lord Fenex read the note and had a great frown on his face once he finished reading. He then sighed and thanked the guard and told him to be on his way. The guard bowed and left politely after apologizing to the guests. Zidicus, Rias's father who had joined the party went along with Rias's peerage, asked, Is there a problem, Lord Fenex? Lord Fenex nodded his head and said, Yes. It seems that Riser has been kidnapped. Zidicus asked, What? But how? Lord Fenex shook his head and said, I don't know but I am assuming your daughter might. Rias had a confused expression and asked, Me. Lord Fenex gave a sigh and smiled, yes. Apparently, the ones who kidnapped him were a bunch of macho men who had no clothes on them except their underwear. They charged into the estate shouting something like youth, and then made their way towards Riser's room where both he and his queen were present. The guards made their way into the room and found a knocked out Yubelina along with a note. He then passed the note to Rias and her group who read I am borrowing this chicken for a while so that he keeps his end of the bargain. Don't worry he will be brought back in a few days with his butt intact if a bit loose. I can't say anything about his mental health though. P.S. Since your family is getting affected by the foolishness of your son, I will give you the 30% of the profits earned. You don't need to thank me. Yours truly, Director It didn't take more than a millisecond for Rias's entire peerage to figure out whose handiwork this was. Rias just gave a wry smile. She then said towards Lord Fenex, I am sorry. Let me handle this IMM dash, Lord Fenex shook his head and said, it's alright. Besides I knew the bet going on between my son and your master through rabble. I and my wife laughed at the prospect of Riser getting humiliated like that. The entire peerage sweat dropped along with Rias and her father. Zidicus then said, but it will drag your family's name down the dirt. Lord Fenex smiled and said, doesn't matter. The boy already lost the family's name when he lost his match against a rookie. Let this just be an extension of that lesson. He is merely facing the consequences of his actions. The peerage who heard that just pitted Riser and then went on celebrating their victory. Two days later, it had been a while since the party had been ended. The peerage had rested well enough. Then Rias called everyone else to a guest room. Once everyone came she said, everyone is here. Good. What's going on president? asked Issei. Rias said, I don't know. I received a disc this morning from my brother. He asked me to watch the entire thing along with you. So here we are. Issei said, okay. She then went ahead and put the disc on the CD driver which was connected to a television screen in the room. The lights in the room were switched off and the windows were covered with a screen. All of their attention was glued to the screen. It showed, CRS Studios presents, Catching a Phoenix's Tail, starring. Riser Fenex produced by the credits rolled and everyone in the room automatically knew what they were going to watch. They wanted to switch off the video but then an image of Naruto showed up you guys want to go that early? Wow here I gave you guys a 2 hour show of Fenex being the gayest man alive and you guys refuse to watch. How rude. Very well you may leave if you want to. Each of them tried to move but they noticed that they could not. They then heard Naruto say oh. So no one left. That's great. You guys are that anxious to watch Riser's ass getting split, aren't you? Everyone except one of them thought, we are not. You all know who that one is, great. Since none of you guys left, it means that all of you are eager to watch this and who am I to stop you? Let the movie roll boys. It was at that moment that they knew, they fucked up. They should have second guessed the situation before watching that tape. Everyone was anxious to move away from the spot, except one. However, all of them noticed that they still could not move. Their bodies with the exception of their eyes were frozen. They then saw the credits end and go into the movie. A narrator started off with the story. The peerage knew that the narrator was Naruto. Warning though it is not a full-blown YAOI scene, there are some innuendos and some words in there for mature audiences only. So read at your own discretion. Long long ago, there lived in a bird in a faraway desert spot. It is the phoenix bird of fire the scene immediately cuts to Riser who was wearing a chicken suit. Unusually his facial expressions, well he had no facial expressions as the guy looked as if it was asleep. One day, when the world was still very young, the sun looked down and saw a magnificent bird. 
The scene now had a man dressed in bright orange. He was a macho man that had too much muscle on his body, like double the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He then whipped out his dong. The sun then let out its essence. Well I don't think I need to explain to you guys what that means, and said, glorious phoenix bird, you shall be my bird and live forever. Live forever. The peerage was devastated at the scene. They then saw an over-enthusiastic riser who did an unspeakable act while saying, glorious sun, from this day onwards, my songs shall be for you alone. They then saw riser do even more unspeakable things to the guy dressed as a son who soon left. Soon more people joined in and the things they did got even worse. The boys in the room wanted to puke however they were still frozen. But the poor bird was not happy for long. It was so magnificent that everyone wanted a feather from it, and some even more. All kinds of men chased after the phoenix. The bird was incredibly upset. I shall fly away and go east. I shall fly to the land of the rising sun where it shall be me and him alone. They saw the other actors leave and only riser and the sun character left behind. The phoenix flew and flew. It flew for a very long time and came to the desert. The desert was free from all humans. The phoenix tried to sing its song to the sun to please it but the sun just could not feel, cough. Hear it. Oh, glorious sun. Please make me young again. Please hear my voice. For 500 years it tried to make the sun hear it but it could not. The bird was now old. Thus it flew back to the land it once came. Once again. The unspeakable things started happening as Riser traveled through heaps of men. Issei who saw that why is it that the more I see it? The more I am getting into it? Wait, is that? Miltan. That fucker was gay after all. Wait. Is he wearing tights? Don't show me this shit. Akeno thought, wow. That's hot. Great. Now I am all hot and bothered and I don't have an outlet. Damn it. What should I do? The rest of them had the same or almost the same things going on in their heads. However, the most pathetic one of them was Asia whose brain was already fried. While on its journey it became old. It came back to its nest collecting sea dash, cough, gum, and many other things on the way and made an egg with it. Once again it sang to the sun. This time the sun had heard its song and spr dash, cough. Shown its rays on the bird. All the others left due to the brightness of the sun's rays, however, the phoenix bird remained in the nest. It was caught in a flash of flames. However, by its side was an egg and from the egg came out another bird slowly sticking out its neck, and once again it was reborn into the young bird. It grew and grew and finally turned back into the beautiful bird it was before. Thus ends the tale of the phoenix who blowed, cough, cough, sang its song to the sun and sun alone. The end, well the worst part is over, everyone thought it was going to be over at that time. They all thought, Oh thank god, ouch. However, fate was still a bitch and sprang another surprise to them in the form of Naruto. Now for the director's cut. Hope you guys enjoy watching how I made this video. They all thought, not again. This time they saw how Naruto made the video yeah, that's the money shot. Just like that. Don't scream riser, take it like a man. Someone. Put a gag ball on his mouth. Yeah. Much better. What? Can't take more than one in each hole. What the fuck? You're a phoenix. Come on where is your phoenix resilience? Boys don't worry. Just do what you want to do. Ouch. That's gotta hurt. Oops. Sorry guys. Seems as if there is a lot of noise in the shot. We need to retake it again. Alright. Action. No 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 what do you mean he's passed out, fuck it let us just put him the video and think about it later. We can do a different story. Hey, you. Elton John look alike. Find me a story about a phoenix. Hmm. A kid's story huh? Not bad. Alright, we'll use this. Here guys. This is your dialogues and some costumes. You don't get to say much, just do your things alright. He's waking up. Don't worry he will do exactly as we say. Itake, come here and do your thing. Oh yeah oh yeah. Just like that. Now cut. And we are done. How long was the total shoot? 18 hours. Damn. Time sure flies huh? Well, the flaming shit did his part. Let's return him back. Hmm, <laughs> ew. God, what is that smell? I didn't notice that was this bad due to the mask. You, go get him a bath. Hmm? <laughs> you wanna do him while he's out? Sure go ahead. Knock yourself out but make sure he is clean in less than an hour. 
Once everything was done. They all were relieved that everything was over. They thought, finally. I couldn't take any more of that. What kind of shitty movie is that? Now we move on to some half an hour extra special footage and some bloopers. They all thought one thing, FFF fuck, K. Sometime later. And that's it, boys and girls. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Well everything's over now, the end credits for the movie started rolling. The peerage was finally free from their invisible bindings. Simultaneously all of them went to the bathroom nearby and started puking except the pair of Asia and Akeno who were knocked out. While Asia was knocked out due to her brains being fried. Akeno was knocked out due to a bloodstream flowing out her nose. If one did not know, they would think she was injured with the amount of blood she ejected from her body. How, oomph. How can Naruto do such things with a straight face, asked Rias holding her mouth trying not to puke again but the thought of the image burnt into her brain itself is churning her stomach. Evil, HMP, said Konako. Ah pie, I am sorry, said Issei and started crying. However, Kiba was the only one who was happy after puking. He started crying. Issei who noticed this asked, Ah Kiba. Are you crying tears out of guilt and sadness like me? Fear not for we will invigorate ourselves by watching lesbian porn for the next 36 hours to erase this image from our minds. Come, brother Kiba. Kiba shook his head and said, no Issei. These are not tears of sadness. These are tears of joy. Issei along with all others who heard that were stunned. Issei asked, what the fuck dude? How the hell can you feel happy after seeing that? You have to be disgusted. Kiba said, yes. That's why I am happy. With how I puked, I can finally prove that I am not gay. Rias then turned toward her peerage who have been revived after some time and said, we never speak of this ever again and burn that shit. Konako added, pulverize it. Rias said, get the CD for me Issei. I will destroy it till not even ash remains. Issei with all the more enthusiasm said, yes president. He then went towards the CD player and then said, wait, what? Where is it? It was then that Rias noticed that the peerage was a missing member. Rias noticed it and said, Akeno come back with that filth. It needs to be burned. Meanwhile, Akeno was smiling in the corridor. She then turned towards the disc in her hands and had a weird gleam in her eye. She then said, they will never have you. They don't needs it. You are mine. You are my. My precious. Meanwhile with Naruto, Naruto who had found that his prank was successful on those brats was laughing his ass off. He had placed a Fuinjutsu that would freeze the targets to watch the video if they tried to switch it off. He made three unique sets of that video and sent one to Azazel and the other to Rias and her crew while keeping one for himself. He had linked the Fuinjutsu so that he would know if they watched it. It was at that moment he got a call from Azazel. He picked it up and asked, what's up? Don't what's up me you son of a bitch. What the fuck is that shit? Ha 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 ha. How was that? Did you enjoy it? Enjoy it. Motherfucker. I puked my gallbladder out watching that disgusting piece of shit that you call porn and what the fuck is with that plot. Using a children's bedtime story as a basis. Trust me when I say that I have never seen a more disgusting thing in my thousand years of living in this world and I should know that because I fell to this world due to my lust. Naruto responded, oh yeah, then tell me why is that disgusting piece of shit of a movie is now selling like hotcakes. Azazel had no response. Naruto asked, well. Azazel finally asked, you are shitting me right. Naruto laughed and said, ha 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 ha. I have already sold over 10,000 copies to the stores and made over 20 million yen in the living world itself. Not to mention the underworld which has more than 20,000 copies now and the movie hasn't been released for even a single day. Azazel said, what the fuck is wrong with this world? Naruto told, you tell me. If people can get off by 2D images of men and women having sex with different genres which also include a wide variety like scat, incest, pedophilia, and even fucking necrophilia, then I don't see my work being any more disgusting than what others show on the screen. Strangely Azazel had no response to that as it is true. What a strange world we live in today. Naruto then told Azazel, well then, that aside, the porn was mainly meant to humiliate Riser and humiliate him it did. Do you know the nerve of that guy? The little shit was complaining about his loss in his bedroom and was plotting to somehow get a rematch by coercing Sertsk through the elders who supported him. Azazel went silent for a while before saying, you are oddly protective of the Gremory group. 
Naruto had no response to that for some time. He then sighed and said, those guys are still kids. I am just a little afraid of whether they will be able to handle the upcoming storm. They are to me like volley is to you. Azazel who heard that said, I see. Naruto then asked, well I doubt this call was only meant to be a social call. Azazel said, yes, I do have something and I need to talk to you in person. Naruto said, all right. But I have something to do now. I'll swing by your place later. Azazel asked, expect you by dinner time. Naruto said, yeah, open a bottle of sake for me. He then hung up the call and thought about the job he was on now. He was on his way to a meeting. He thought, wonder who I am going to meet now. Flashback Naruto was doing his own thing at the school when Itaka contacted him. He then went to meet him in the school's gardens. He saw Itaka waiting for him with some documents. He asked, so what have you found? Itaki responded, you were right. There were some traces of this Zetsu character being in the yokai faction searching for the blades. My contact on the inside was able to confirm it personally when he saw him accidentally. However, those who spotted him said that he was not acting alone when he was there. Naruto asked, you are saying that Zetsu had a partner? Itaki replied, yes. Naruto asked, so what else did you find? Itaki said, I was able to look through my contact's memories. The man with Zetsu was cloaked in black. He was a tall man and was muscular. I wasn't able to see his features but I was able to hear their conversation when the name, that bitch Athena popped out. I believe that the lead has something to do with the Greek faction. Naruto said, Greek faction huh? Itaka then said, I then looked into the faction and was able to get another contact inside. However, when I asked for the information he asked for something in return. Something I cannot give. Naruto asked, what did he ask? Itaka said, you. Naruto was stunned and asked, but how? Itaka said, he was somehow able to figure out the connection between us and he asked to meet you I person. He is willing to give up the information only if he met you. Naruto thought for a while. He said, fine. When and where? Back to present. Naruto was informed that Itaka's contact was meeting him at an isolated area a few miles away from Kyuah. He didn't want to alert the devils in Kyuah and thus asked to meet him away from the school. Naruto went to the designated spot. It was a thickly bushed area that hid from unwanting eyes but at the same time was perfect for an ambush. Naruto was all the more ready for the latter but then heard a voice speak to him from behind. Well hello there. You must be Master Naruto Izumaki correct? Naruto then turned back to find a man. No not a man as this man had goat horns and goat legs. His upper body was dressed in a farmer's attire while he had disheveled hair and an unkempt beard. He was the epitome of a wild man. Or goat. Naruto then asked the man, well then, it seems you know me, so are you going to introduce yourself or should I find it out myself? The goat, man, goat smiled and said, no. You don't need to. I am sorry, where are my manners? My name is Pan, god of the wilderness and part of the Greek faction. Nice to meet you. Naruto looked at the goat man who called himself as Pan. He narrowed his eyes and asked, well then why don't you start telling me how you found me? Pan said, right off to business are we? Such a shame, thought I would get to know you better. Naruto responded, if the circumstances were different I would have loved to chit chat but it's not so right now. Pan nodded his head and said seriously, true, well we do have a problem on our hands. As to how I found you, it was simple. Your presence stick out like a sore thumb. Naruto slightly annoyed asked, you would have to be more specific. Pan said, the others may not notice but those who are tuned in with nature are much more attuned with sensing others, you may know this since you are a sage. One can sense the remnant energy around you. Naruto argued, but I severed the link and erased all traces on me once I was done. Pan said, it is no doubt that you have been thorough in hiding your presence but you did leave some traces in the sites you visited. I personally noticed your activity four years ago when the nature around this place started blooming. So I came here to investigate the cause so did others from various factions. All of them were no less skilled than me, though they missed one point, they forgot to ask the witnesses. Naruto asked, witnesses. Pan smiled, the places you visited is filled with life, plants, and animals in general are more sensitive to senjutsu and nature energy. I am the god of wilderness, hence it was no problem for me once I was able to communicate with one of them. 
It was a bit problematic since most of the animals were not that smart enough to describe you properly but I was able to find one intelligent enough to give your description. Naruto asked, Karama. The goat is speaking the truth. Pan continued, this was six months ago. I saw that you were only healing the earth and didn't wish to interfere with the supernatural. Hence I left you alone. Then one day, I saw that one of your own was looking for something. The person was thorough but there were a few traces of your energy on him. Very minute that one wouldn't notice so easily. Hence I connected him to you on a whim. Turns out it was true. Naruto sighed and said, what do you want? Pan smiled. He then bowed and said, thank you. Naruto was stunned at his response. Pan then continued, for many centuries we have been trying to protect and conserve what is left of this earth in our own way. The humans had destroyed most of the forests and the lives of many who depend on it. It is no doubt that the world is dying and nearing its end. Your interference and help had delayed the process however little it may have been in this short time. I only ask that you continue what you are doing. Naruto shook his head and said in an apathetic manner, I only wish to look out for my own well-being. I am not doing this to help others. Pan said, that may be so but you have still helped many others, indirectly. Naruto asked, well if you are still feeling gratitude for my actions, then I will take it. So now can you please tell me what you know? Pan nodded his head and said, I plan to. The man you are searching for is Ares, the god of war. Naruto asked, what does he want? Pan said, Ares is a bloodthirsty maniac who loves to fight and kill. He is a ruthless and an arrogant being. He intends to start a war so that it may quench his thirst for battle. Naruto said, go on. Pan said, well there have been rumors about Ares' strange behavior as of recent times. He had been seen meeting the various minor gods. He also had a shadow following him however the man's features were unknown as he was completely covered in black. He had, a very disturbing presence, but I felt that he was somehow connected to nature. Naruto asked, how do you know this? Pan said, I know of this because they both approached me. Naruto asked, what did they want? Pan said, they asked whether I would like to join them in a cause to gain more power and respect by overthrowing Olympus as you may know, the minor gods often get oppressed by the Olympians. Naruto remained silent while Pan continued, truth be told, I was tempted by their offer as the Olympians including Demeter have often ignored the damage they do to the wilds and the forests. However the business felt shady as Ares is a battle hungry man. If the Olympians were defeated, then his sights would turn on to the other factions. Thus I said that I still need some time to decide. Somehow they were convinced that this is the best they could get and left. Naruto understood what Pan was talking about. He then thought, Sozetsu saw a weakness in their folds and used the battle-hungry nature of Ares to manipulate him into overthrowing the Olympians. Alone it would be impossible for one Olympian to face twelve others. Ares must have also sought the help of others, but who? Pan said, it seems you thought of something. Naruto asked, if you want Olympus taken down and couldn't do it alone, who would you ask? Pan said, those I trust as my friends. Naruto asked, and if others joined in on the cause? Who would they be? Pan said, the enemies who would benefit from the cause. Pan had a look of realization and understood what he was talking about. He was horrified at the prospect. He looked at Naruto and asked, so you mean to say dash, that Ares may also have the idea of recruiting the titans, said Naruto. Pan said, but he wouldn't dash, Naruto said, what's stopping him from doing so? Pan realized how grave the matter was but then added, it would be difficult for him to do so, especially since most of the titans are locked up in Tartarus. He wouldn't escape Hades' eyes. Naruto said, no the man with him could. Pan said, we wouldn't know that for sure. But you are right, one must prepare himself for the worst scenario possible. Naruto then looked at Pan and then said, look I know your opinion in the matter. But I do want a favor. Pan looked at Naruto and understood what he wanted to say. He then said, you want me to join Ares' stronghold and find out what he is doing. Naruto nodded his head. Pan then said, why are you trying to get yourselves involved in this war? Naruto said, trust me, I have little love for the Greek gods if the knowledge I gained from the books is real. Though it matters little as I seek the one that put Ares up to this. He is working for someone, very dangerous. Pan understood the words and didn't ask Naruto any further. He sighed and said, all right. Since you have made a request for me, I cannot decline after what you have done for us. 
I will do as you ask and find out more on what they are planning. Naruto said, thank you. He then gave a high ration kunao to Pan and said, here, I want you to throw this whenever you wish to contact me or you feel yourself in danger. I will appear there as soon as you do it. But be careful to do it in a discreet place where no eyes are upon us. Pan nodded and then said, I will contact you when I have something. He then left the area and went deep inside the forests where Naruto's eyes couldn't follow. Naruto was thinking about what Pan had said and then thought, so there might be a need for us to go to Greece. What do you guys think? Well we do need to find out what Zetsu is up to and for that we need to investigate. Naruto sighed and said, such a dragon it was just some time ago that I had gone off on a trip. He then thought, huh. I haven't visited Yasaka or Kunu ever since I left, maybe I should visit them. So that you could go ahead and tap that booty, asked Kurama in a perverse way. S shut up. I never said that, said Naruto, is it just me or did anyone else hear Naruto kun not refusing that statement, asked Madatavi, huh. Must be a real looker if Naruto has got a crush on the lass. Said Jayaki true said son Gaku haha <laughs> said Shikaku Naruto was flustered and he said, oh gee. The only times you speak to me every time is when you are trying to gang up on me is it? No I don't have a crush on Yasaka. Heck why the hell you guys always rile me up and make me act like a teenager. Kurama said, that's because you are one. Naruto said, shut up you stupid furball. Idiot asshat asshat am I? Mr. Little Gay for Suzuki. Yes you are Mr. Daddy please touch my no no. What was that you little shit? Bring it on rabbit ears. Get a room you two. Naruto you have a better chance with Kurama than you have with that lass, so why don't you guys get together, said Shukaku, what was that you sand rat? You looking for a fight? What was that you sand rat? You looking for a fight? Jayoki sighed and said, ah shit. Here we go again. Madatabi said, boys will be boys. Sometime later, after the scuffle he had with the biju. Naruto made way back to the academy. He then started doing his job at the academy. There weren't as much action in the day with him only weeding out the school and priming the trees. The school was still on holiday and thus both students and the faculty were absent. It was in the evening that Naruto decided to take a break and go out. He still had some time to kill before he met up with Azazel, so he changed into some casual clothes. He then went out for a walk in the city to grab some food and watch a movie as he usually does. Thus he went to a cafe where he sat and called for the waiter. The waiter came by and asked for his order while blushing a little. After all, the guy was a lot more handsome than he was before. Funny enough Naruto remembered the disgusted looks he got from his appearance from the same waiter as before. However he didn't comment about that and just asked for some latte. The waiter took his order and came back a few minutes later with it. He then noticed that she had left a phone number on one of the tissues. Naruto just drank his latte and came out of the place. It was late in the evening. He saw that a new movie was going on in the theater and then decided to watch it. He went by the counter and bought the tickets before going inside. Strange enough the theater was empty. He thought, well, must be a bad movie. The movie was starting soon and Naruto found out that only a couple of people entered and most of them were couples. Naruto saw that he was all alone in his section while the couples had occupied some of the seats in the back. Naruto then saw that the movie had started but it was then Kurama said, heads up buddy. You got company. I am sorry, but is this seat taken, asked a voice. Naruto then looked to who the voice was and smiled, not at all. The one who seated beside Naruto was a woman. Her features were not all that distinguishable in the dim light but Naruto could sense that she was beautiful. Though one does wonder why in a theater filled with many empty seats the woman had to pick the seat right beside Naruto. However Naruto didn't bother to make any more conversation with the lady and just saw the movie quietly. The same could be said about the lady. They stayed like that till the end of the movie. Naruto silently watched the movie with minimum interest as the movie was quite boring with very stiff actors and a rather dull script. His mind then turned its attention to the lady beside him. He wondered about the woman's face and her appearance in general and looked at her. However his gaze didn't go unnoticed. The woman in question then spoke to him, whoa. Look at that, checking me out already, are you Naya? Naruto who heard blushed but however responded, well, the movie is quite boring and from what I can feel, a beautiful woman is nearby. It would be a shame to not check her out. The person who heard that became silent but then Naruto felt her hands on his thighs. He shivered at the contact. Well then. 
Why don't we go somewhere brighter than this so that both of us can appreciate our appearances more thoroughly Naya? Said the lady while whispering the last part of the sentence in his ear. Naruto would be lying if he said that he didn't enjoy the way the lady was acting towards him. However he knew that she came on business. He then grabbed hold of her hand and kept it on her laps before saying. Well, why don't we stay here? After all you did come to speak business didn't you my dear Nikomata? The noise in the background would thwart all eavesdroppers. The lady who heard that was surprised at Naruto before she said, Ah, you are no fun Naya. Naruto smiled and then asked seriously, Tell me why you are here. The lady said, Well, Lady Yasaka had been worried that you haven't contacted her after you left Kyoto and sent me here to find you Naya. She wanted to give you a message Naya Yasaka did. The lady nodded her head, Yeah, though it was difficult finding you since you look nothing like the description that Lady Yasaka gave. Naruto then asked, so how is she? Is she doing alright? How is Kunu? The lady responded, Wow Naya, you sure do ask a lot of questions. Does somebody have a crush on my lady? Naruto who heard that blushed but thought that it would be hidden in the darkness, however that blush didn't go unnoticed by the lady who smiled. She then spoke with Naruto about Yasaka and Kunu and about Kyoto and its situation to Naruto and also gave Yasaka's letter addressed to him which Naruto filed away so that he can read it later. Both of them ignored the movie that was going on. It went for a while before the pair of them noticed that the lights had turned on and the movie had ended. Naruto noticed the features of the lady more clearly. She had white hair and had a pale complexion. However the most distinguishable features are the cat ears and tails, along with her amber yellow eyes that looked like a cat. The lady had answered all the questions Naruto asked and then said, Well, since I have answered all your questions, I would like to ask one of my own Naya. Naruto knew what the question would be but smiled and then motioned her to ask. The lady said, How did you find me Naya? Naruto said, It was simple enough. I can see through your illusion quite easily and detect a feline nature in your aura. However, your aura. It feels, quite familiar. The Nikomata who heard that was now nervous. Though she didn't show it on her face, her slight change in body language said it all. Naruto noticed this but didn't prod deep into the matter since it was a difficult subject for her. He then said, well since you have accomplished your mission, you may go back to Yasaka if you want to. The Nikomata shook her head and said, no Naya, I will send her a message but I won't leave, not yet. Lady Yasaka strictly gave me the orders to stay in this town and monitor the activities of the devils. She also asked me to serve you for whatever needs you may have once I found you and to ask for your assistance in finding a place to stay on her behalf Naya. Naruto said, I see. The Nikomata said, henceforth, I shall serve you Lord Naruto, so please tell me what you need me to do and I shall obey Naya. Naruto nodded and said, alright then, I want you to find this address and go there. There will be a person waiting for you there. Tell him I sent you and he will tell you what you need to do in addition of giving a place for you stay. The Nikomata nodded her head and was about to leave before Naruto asked, wait. The Nikomata turned back and slightly tilted her head. Naruto thought, see cute but shook his head and immediately asked, I didn't catch your name. The Nikomata smiled and said, it's Tsubasa Naya. Tsubasa Hainkawa. Naruto said, nice to meet you Tsubasa. The lady smiled and said, it is a pleasure as well, Lord Naruto. Naruto said, call me Naruto. The Lord stuff is kind of stiff for my taste. Tsubasa smiled even more and said, Alright Naruto Naya, see you later Naya. She then vanished into the darkness. Naruto then heard Kurama speak, she's hiding something. Yes, but I don't think it's dangerous. So you felt it too didn't you? Yes, she hid it well but I can sense that she uses nature energy, I can feel traces of it around her and... And... And I think that she is somehow related to Konako. Her appearance is uncanny. Best left to find more about it another day. True. I better go meet Azazel now. The guy said that he had something to talk about. Naruto then slowly made his way to Azazel's apartment. It was quite near the place he watched the movie so he reached there in a few minutes. He then entered inside and saw that Vala was also there. He greeted Vala, yo. Yo, greeted Vali in the same way. Azazel said, hey there Naruto. The ramen is going to be ready in a few minutes. There's some sake in the fridge. Naruto then went towards the fridge and took out two bottles. Azazel came back with two empty cups and three bowls of ramen. Naruto looked at it and asked, only three. Azazel shrugged, 
Don't ask me, three was all that was left in the supermarket. It seems some nutcase ramen addict other than you bought all of it. Vala looked at him and said, you are just saying that because you didn't want to go elsewhere and buy it. Azazel said, well that's not false. Naruto said, well alright. Attack Dakamesu. Naruto and Vala then slowly dug through their bowls of ramen. The two of them ate so fast that Azazel didn't even complete saying Ita Dakamesu. The both of them let out a sigh of appreciation for the meal while Azazel gaped in surprise. He said, how the hell do you guys do that? If you loved ramen as much as we do, you would know, said Naruto Azazel shook his head and then turned to look at his bowl but only found it to be missing. He then noticed that Vala was eating through the contents of his bowl. Azazel said, hey that's mine. Vala retorted, not anymore, it isn't. Azazel just sighed and then said, alright. You can have it kid since you won't be drinking. Now then scram. The adults got to talk here. Vala just snorted and then left. Naruto then turned towards Azazel who opened his sake bottle. He asked, so what did you want to talk about? Azazel sighed and said, do you remember Rainer? Naruto asked, Rehu? Oh. You mean the chick that killed Issei? Azazel nodded his head and said, well, you already know of the fact that they were traitors, so I don't need to expand on that any further. Turns out the boss they were working for, my subordinate, Kakabayal is planning something. Naruto asked, oh. Azazel said, he is working some Rouge members of the church and collecting the Excalibur swords to gain power. He's looking to start a war among the three faction again. Naruto said, and this concerns me how. Azazel said, he intends to start it by killing the sisters of the Mu. Naruto turned silent at that. He then asked, you telling me this, means one thing and that you need my help. Azazel shook his head, no I am not asking you to do that as that would reveal yourself. With the stunt you pulled the time before you left for the gap, it would only draw more scrutiny to the event. Naruto was now confused. He then asked, then why are you telling me this? Azazel said, I want you to stay low until the three factions come to a meeting. Naruto said, so you want to use the devils as a bait to draw out Kakabile and eliminate him with Vali. You then propose a meeting to resolve the issue between the three factions. Azazel nodded, that is my plan. Naruto asked, why do you think that will work? If anything, the other factions will only blame you for not disciplining your subordinates properly. Azazel said, true, but the current leaders of the three factions are peace lovers and have been hoping for peace between the three factions for a long time. Other than that, we do have other threats to be wary of. Naruto asked, such as. Azazel said, recently I have heard rumors of a terrorist group coming into being. They are called the Chaos Brigade and they are headed by one of the three great beings dash, Naruto said, off eyes. I know. Azazel drank some sake and asked, how did you know? Naruto said, oh. I and Afiz had a little fight in the dimensional gap when she forcefully tried to recruit me to her cause. Soon Great Red joined in and it became a battle royal between the three of us. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
I think I may need your cooperation if what I found is true. Azazel asked. Naruto then sighed and explained the details to Azazel. Azazel listened attentively and then frowned. He said, so you believe that this Zetsu character is pulling some strings. Naruto nodded his head and said, yes. That thing loves to cause chaos and confusion. Azazel then said, so we need the stability, now more than ever. Naruto saw what Azazel was saying and sighed. He then said, I don't like the way you are going with this but as long as the kids are not in any real danger, I won't involve myself. Azazel said, that's more than enough for me. The both of them then drank their sake before talking some more about their plans for the future before their conversation turned to become lighthearted. They enjoyed the rest of the evening as Naruto returned back to his quarters near midnight before he slept. Three weeks later, Naruto started working as usual. School had started once again and the students and teachers have started coming back to school. Naruto has been getting a lot of attention from both students and teachers due to the change in appearance. A lot of girls had started appreciating the new Naruto like he was some kind of idol while the boys were as equally stunned, though their reactions was mainly cursing the blonde, which incurred the wrath of the female populace. Some of the more daring females had took sneak pictures of him but very unusually all their phones had burst. A slash n, camera shy piccolo, if you know what I mean, while some others had asked for a date from him which he declined of course. The Gremory peerage had also come back to school and were attending quite normally. School went on as usual but Naruto did get close to one other person and that was Tsubasa who was now hanging by his thighs, quite literally. UMM. Tsubasa. Yes, Narunaya. Can you tell me why you are? I don't know using my lap as a pillow. You looked so lonely Naya and I was sleepy, so I thought I would come and give you some company and in return you give me a lap to sleep on. Besides, your lap really feels cozy Naya. Naruto and Tsubasa were in the gardens and under one of the school's bigger trees. He and she had become close ever since Ataka went to Greece more than two weeks ago. She had been asked by Ataka to go back to Naruto since he had her do only the menial tasks. He didn't share the true nature of his work as instructed by Naruto and only had her work on some of the private jobs that came to him so that they could have some funding. Naruto just let her be as he didn't have any use for her. Since then she was just hanging out with Naruto and had been closing the distance between them. A lot of times she teased Naruto and a lot of times, he had teased her. He found her to be endearing but really, clingy. Though he didn't hate the attention. Naruto sighed and then said, Tsubasa. Can you please tell me why you are trying to unzip my pants? Tsubasa said, it's obvious Naya. Since we need to make babies. Plus isn't kinky to do it outside Naya. Naruto sighed and thought of the night that Tsubasa first started doing this flashback, roughly week ago, Naruto was going back to his quarters to retire for the evening. He then went inside his room like usual, closing his eyes which were unfocused. He took off his shirt and then fell on the bed. He thought, hmm. Warm, fuzzy. Smells nice, wait, smells nice. He then suddenly opened his eyes to find a naked Tsubasa with her buxom body in all her glory. She smirked and said, you like what you see Naya. Naruto deadpanned at her and said, why are you here? No, the more precise question would be, why are you in my room naked? Tsubasa who heard that smirked and slowly, isn't it obvious Naya? To sleep with you so that we could make babies. Naruto said, once again, why? Tsubasa said, well, you know that the Nikomata race is almost extinct right? She saw Naruto nod her head and thus continued, well, since the race is almost extinct. It is my duty to make some good babies with a strong male so that our race is saved Naya. You are strong and I think you would make a great father for my children. Hence, come on. Naruto who heard that immediately deadpan like never before. He then stood up, picked her up by the neck, opened the door and then kicked her out of the room before shutting the door behind her. She then shouted, Hey what the hell Naya? What kind of man would refuse to sleep with a woman Naya? The kind that is normal, retorted Naruto from the inside. Just you wait, you asshole. I will get you yet. Back to present since then, Tuzbasa had been trying all kinds of things to get Naruto to sleep with her. She took advantage of him numerous times. She even spiked his drinks with various amount of substances that would make Naruto dull so that she could get her way but Naruto always found about it and countered the substance before he chided and scolded her. He couldn't punish her, no. As she would somehow give him the puppy dog eyes, well I guess cute kitten eyes in this case. 
but the point being it was too cute for him that it discouraged him from punishing her. Tsubasa said, What are you thinking Naya? Naruto finally said, Why are you doing this Tsubasa? There are a lot of other people who may be a good partner. Tsubasa said, But none of them would be like you. Naruto asked, What is it that you find attractive in me anyway? Tsubasa remained silent before saying, You are strong but you never once allow it to make you arrogant and make you feel superior, you could refuse but you always give a helping hand to others. You are kind, you are strong, you are loyal to those around you, you are tolerant to my antics and you are handsome. I couldn't find a man better than you even if I had to search the whole world. Naruto blushed at the compliment and flattery Tsubasa gave and then gave an awkward response, I am glad you think so, but don't you want to have your babies with someone? I don't know, someone you like. Tsubasa smiled and said, what makes you think that I don't like you Naya? Naruto who heard that was stunned. Tsubasa continued, what, do you think I am no less than a harlot who throws her towards the next man she finds? No, I do like you Naya. Not because you have been kind to me, not because you helped save my master and prevented a coup. No, those only earned my gratitude. I came to like the person you are in the short time I spent with you. Naruto said, but don't you think you are acting a bit hasty? Tsubasa said, no I don't feel so Naya. I really like you. I haven't felt this way since, since. She then turned said for some reason. Naruto caught on to her feelings and then realized, this isn't your first time, isn't it? Tsubasa shook her head, no it isn't Naya. I had a husband once before. But he died a while back. Naruto remained silent for some time before saying, I am sorry. I shouldn't have brought up the subject. Tsubasa shook her head, no. It is not your fault and it is something you must know. Naruto said, do you want to talk about it? Tsubasa remained silent for a while. Naruto sighed and said, we can talk when you are ready. Tsubasa gave a silent thank you. Naruto said, and about your confession, Tsubasa. It's alright Narunaya. I can wait. I know that I may have forced my feelings up on you too soon. Naruto said, I'm sorry. Tsubasa said, like I said, it's fine. They remained silent for some time before the atmosphere became awkward. Tsubasa noticed this and decided to break the silence. She said, I think I should go now. She was about to leave but Naruto grabbed hold of her. He then placed her head on his lap before he said to her gently, you said that you liked to sleep on my lap didn't you? But dash I know I can't answer you immediately Tsubasa, but this is the least I can do for you. Relax. But Dash interjected Tsubasa but Naruto said, that's an order. Tsubasa didn't refuse any more and just silently sat on Naruto's lap and fell asleep. Naruto who saw that smiled and then thought, huh. Guess I do like her don't I? But not enough to accept her feelings. Yes. Why are you holding back kid? Naruto was silent at that before Kurama said, is it because of your old mate? Naruto said, none of your business. Kurama turned silent at that and snorted, hmm fine. Suit yourself. Naruto who saw Tsubasa sleeping on his lap felt like sleeping himself and fell asleep along with her. It was a while before Tsubasa woke up with some drool on Naruto's lap. She saw that Naruto had also fell asleep under the tree. She went closer to look at his features. It was then she noticed the faint whisker marks on his face. She thought, whisker marks. She touched it and he automatically purred. She found the feature of his to be cute. However her attention was then drawn towards his lips. She silently moved forward like an attracted magnet pulling herself closer to his face before the person woke up. She then pulled herself away with a blush. Naruto had a wry smile as he noticed what she was doing but didn't want to embarrass her any further. He said, had a good nap. Tsubasa smiled and said, the best Naya. Naruto gave a Cheshire Fox grin and said, glad you enjoyed it. He then said, well, so since you are relaxed, I guess I can ask you some questions I have been having on my mind now. Tsubasa asked, and what is that Naya? Naruto turned serious and asked, how are you related to Konako? Tsubasa who heard that was all the more nervous. She asked, what do you mean Naya? Naruto said, look Tsubasa, I knew that you were hiding your true purpose of staying back since the beginning. I always noticed the way you hid yourself whenever Konako was near. You erased all sorts of traces you had on me and kept minimum contact when she was around. I didn't want to ask you before, but now I want to know. Tsubasa asked, and why is that Naya? Naruto said, 
because I want to help you. Tsubasa remained silent for some time before sighing. She said, nothing escapes your sight does it Naya? Naruto grinned and gave a cheeky reply, nope. Tsubasa grinned before saying, the truth is. She looked up to the sky before saying, the truth is dash, Naruto said, you are Konako's mother. Tsubasa was stunned. She asked, how dash Naruto said, I can easily see that from the way you look. Your resemblance with her is uncanny, your aura also felt similar. Tsubasa smiled and said, yes. I am her biological mother. Naruto said, so you stayed here because. Tsubasa said, I wanted to get to know the daughter that I had thought I lost. Naruto remained silent. Tsubasa sighed and said, look. I know that you have a lot of questions Naya, but can I answer them another time? Naruto nodded his head. He said, I think it's better you get some rest now. I didn't think you were expecting for this conversation to happen this soon anyway. Tsubasa said, yeah. It was then Naruto received a phone call. He looked at it and saw that it was Itaki. He picked up the call and said, hey Itaki what's happening? Tsubasa was about to leave before she saw a change in Naruto's expression. His face changed into a frown. She decided to stay behind and finally noticed Naruto say, alright, I'll be there as soon as possible. Tsubasa finally asked, what's wrong? Naruto frowned and said, trouble. It was a school day and everything was going on quiet. At least it used to. The rest of the club looked on as Issei and Kiba battled the two exorcists who barged in the club room with a frenzied Kiba who was thirsting for blood, or metal if what Issei found out was true. Issei thought, how the hell did this happen? Flashback Issei was there along with the rest of his club at home. Rias had asked everyone to have the club meeting back at Issei's house as there were some renovations going on in the club room. To say that Issei was embarrassed in his home due to the pictures his mother was showing his friends was an understatement. He was so ashamed that he wanted to dig a hole in the ground and bury himself. However his club mates were of a different opinion finding a little Issei to be cute. It was then Issei noticed Kiba looking at a picture with a frown. Issei asked, what's wrong Kiba? Kiba looked at Issei and asked, do you know who this is, Issei? He then handed a picture of Issei along with another kid with a decorated sword in the background. Issei thought for a while before saying, oh yeah. This kid used to be one of our neighbors back when I was little. We used to play together but he moved out a long time ago. Kiba said, this. This is a holy sword. Issei asked, a holy sword. Kiba looked on before shaking his head. He then said, it's nothing Issei. You have very nice pictures here. Issei just looked on confused but he knew that Kiba was bothered with something. However he didn't prod it too much as he knew that everyone had their secrets. Back to present later on Issei saw that Kiba was not as focused as he was before. Issei found out from Rias about Kiba's past about being an experimental subject for a rogue holy man. All throughout this time, Kiba wasn't being himself but still at least maintained some level of tolerance and sanity but all of that snapped when the two pairs of exorcists came barging into the school grounds along with two holy swords that Issei found out to be Excaliburs with one of them being his old friend, Irina, who much to his surprise turned out to be a chick. The two came in and demanded that the peerage back off from their matters and threatened them that they wouldn't be shown mercy if they were found to have a hand in the matter. While he did his best to stay calm at the haughty and insulting front the pair put up in front of them. All of that came to a halt when one of the exorcists, Zenovia if Issei got her name correct tried to kill Asia in the name of God and insulted her to no end. That pissed him out more than anything they did and now it came down to this. A duel. That was what was proposed by Kiba. Issei now looked at his opponent. It was the girl with the chestnut hair and twin tails. She was wearing a tight fit suit to help her combat needs. She said, I am sorry but I have to do this Issei. But for the sake of the lord I have to defeat you, shouted Irina as she withdraw her Excalibur mimic. Issei sighed and said, can you just stop saying that in front of us? It really is painful hearing his name. Irina stuck out her tongue and said, I'm sorry. Zenovia was paired up against Kiba who looked ready to pounce at her. Zenovia allows withdraw her Excalibur destruction and then said, in the name of the lord, I shall punish you, devil. Prepare yourself. For the love of your fucking deity. Stop saying that name gush darn it, shouted Issei as he had a headache once again Kiba ignored the shouting Issei and responded to Zenovia, you don't need to worry. I am. He then shouted, sword birth. He then took one of the swords and engaged Zenovia in combat. 
They exchanged a flurry of blows but Zenobia seemed to have the upper hand as the holy sword was strong against devils. Meanwhile the same was going on with Issei who also battled against Irina. Her Excalibur changed into a form of a whip and slashed at Issei. Issei shouted, what the heck dude? A whip. Can this get any more sadistic? He then dodged the attacks from Irina who shouted, this is my Excalibur mimic's ability, it can mimic any weapon as long as I wish it. Right now, this whip is meant to be a whip of love from God Issei. Issei shouted, alright it's confirmed, you are 100% crazy. Boost Issei's boosted gear was working as he started to buy himself time so that he can power up. Once he felt it was enough, he shouted, ready or not, here I come. He then charged at Irina who was now defending attacks from Issei at close range but she was doing poorly as Issei was overpowering her. However it was still not enough to bring her down. Issei thought, I need to wear her down. I can't use any destructive techniques here in this closed space. Kiba was doing well against his opponent. However Zenovia was still a tough nut who didn't care about her surroundings and wielded Excalibur destruction with all its might. Kiba then took to the defensive as he tried to evade those attacks. The nearby ground was being destroyed. However his focus still remained on the sword in his opponent's hand. Why are you being evasive? Is that all you've got after that talk you just gave, asked Zenovia taunting Kiba to attack her. However Kiba didn't respond and just grit his teeth. He looked at the cracks on his sword and thought, no matter how good a sword I produce, it will be still weak against the Excalibur destruction she wields. It was then Kiba decided something, I am going to destroy that sword no matter what it takes. Kiba immediately took some distance between them. Zenovia noted that Kiba was up to something but waited to see what he was doing. Kiba then pulled out a long and thick blade almost the same size as him with a long and thin handle. It was an ominous looking blade. Zenovia could immediately feel the thirst for blood. She thought, what is that sword? Why do I get this intense thirst for blood from it? I need to be careful and make some distance. No doubts about it, it was the executioner's blade. Kiba then shouted, alright exorcist. Prepare yourself. No matter what it takes, I am going to break that sword you hold in your hand. Kiba then charged at Zenovia avoiding the blasts of magic she fired at him. He then went forward and slashed her which she blocked with her Excalibur. The blades were producing sparks all over as the ground beneath them rumbled and cracked due to the strength. Kiba and Zenovia were so focused on each other that they didn't notice a hand grabbing them and throwing them away from each other along with their swords. I leave the place for an hour to buy some fertilizer and what do I find? You guys are here fighting with not even a regard of where you are. Master, shouted Issei. The fighting had been stopped by Naruto who had come in between them and stopped both Kiba and Zenovia. Zenovia not pleased immediately attacked Naruto with a frontal slash. However Naruto just frowned and caught the Excalibur with his bare hand stopping the attack. Zenovia thought, impossible. He caught the blade with just his hand. Just who is he? Naruto then said, now that wasn't very nice of you, was it? However he was then attacked by Irina who came at him and used her whip to catch Naruto. Naruto kicked Zenovia throwing her off while disarming her and then caught the whip that and once again threw a surprised Irina at Zenovia. Both of them clashed against the wall. Ouch ouch ouch. That hurts muttered Irina rubbing her head. Master. Said Rias. Naruto then sighed and shouted, You kids, you think you guys are hotshots doing whatever you wanted. Do you know what you have done? Look he then pointed at the nearby trees that had their branches or trunks cut down as collateral damage from their battle. He then shouted, do you have any idea how long it took for me to trim and maintain those trees? How much damage you have caused them? I looked after those trees as my own children and treat them with affection, love, and care. Here you come and just mess it up as if you own the place. You rotten little shits. Issei said, technically the school still belongs to. Naruto narrowed his eyes and shouted, what was that? Issei swallowed his words and said, and nothing. The rest of the peerage maintained an awkward and abashed silence as Naruto reprimanded them. The pair of exorcists who recovered, made their way to the group. You have no business interfering in this duel between us. I ask that you please leave after you hand over our swords back to us said Zenovia. Naruto frowned. He then said, I don't know what the problem between your two groups is but this fight is over and I will not hand over your swords unless you agree to leave. Zenovia snorted and said, the devils were the one that initiated the fight. We will not leave unless they state that they lose. Issei shouted, yeah right. 
admit that you guys lost and apologize to Asia. Zenovia argued, I will do no such thing as what I said was right. She is a witch. Issei shouted, why you dash however all of that stopped the moment they all felt an intense pressure making them all fall on their feet. Naruto then slowly said, did I not make myself clear? This. Fight. Is. Over. He then looked at Issei and Kiba with a reproachful look. The pair whimpered in fear. Naruto then looked at the pair of exorcists as he slowly said, like I said before, I don't know for what reason you have come here or what your goal is. But if it in any way puts anyone here in harm's way unnecessarily, then I will not be as merciful as I am right now. He then threw the pair of holy swords on the ground near them and said, leave this place and don't show your faces around these parts unless you are ready to talk politely. Zenovia and Irina took their swords and then nodded their heads in fear as they the school grounds. Naruto then looked at the devils with a stoic face as everyone were scared shitless. He then looked at Kiba and said, give me the sword. Kiba had a look of hesitance on him before he handed the sword back to Naruto. Naruto then said, I gave it you before because I felt that you will have some use for it but I see now that you are still not ready for it as you let your rage overturn your reason. Kiba had the decency to look ashamed as Naruto said that but he still grit his teeth. He then ran away from the place. Everyone shouted, Kiba. Leave him. Let him cool his head down. Said Naruto silencing the entire group. Well then, why don't ya guys explain what the hell is going on over here? Meanwhile in Greece, Naruto made his way to Greece after he came over using one of the earlier markers he had left while he was visiting there before. He had sent Tsubasa away from him and back to Yasaka after leaving a clone at school as he can't take vacation when he had just returned from the previous one. He came to the rendezvous point they had agreed before. It was a watering hole. The good thing about watering holes was that the places are always filled with people. The perfect place to discuss something private where the noises of the outside silenced their own. Naruto went inside and found Itaka seated in one of the seats drinking along with someone else at the bar table. Naruto saw that the person was a lady with auburn hair and tender skin. She was beautiful with a modest bust and butt. However it was her eyes that attracted the most to him as her eyes were grey. It was pretty unusual sight as usually people would be attracted by such a beauty in a bar. However none of them seemed to even acknowledge her existence and their eyes didn't even glance at her direction. Karama said, she must be using an illusion. Naruto thought, yeah he didn't think much of it and then went forward to sit beside Itaki. He then looked at the barkeep and said, beer. The barkeep said, coming right up. The barkeep went back to the station and filled a glass of beer and passed it on to Naruto. Naruto thanked the barkeep as he downed it in one go and said, give me another one, the barkeep was astonished at the way Naruto downed the 300 ml glass of beer in one go and then asked for another. But well he has seen stranger things so he wasn't astonished for long. Naruto then asked, well, are you going to talk? Or are you waiting for me to do so? Itaka sighed and then said, I was waiting until the place was a little more crowded until we could talk. Naruto replied, you don't need to worry about that, I already placed some silencing seals on us as soon as we entered. Itaka nodded his head. Naruto then asked, so who's the company you have? The barkeep returned with Naruto's drink. Naruto thanked the man once again but this time drank slowly. The mentioned company introduced herself. My name is Athena, goddess of war and wisdom and one of the twelve Olympians of the Greek faction. Naruto recognized the name and said, it is an honor to meet you Lady Athena. Athena politely replied, the honor is mine, Mr. Uzumaki. Itaka sighed and said, well, I think I have already covered much of the details of what is happening in the phone call I gave you before. Athena here is willing to cooperate with us on our mission. Athena nodded her head and said, yes. Zeus has given me permission to represent Olympus on his behalf to help you however we can. However we do have one condition. Naruto asked, such as. Athena said, we require the custody of Ares. Naruto nodded his head, all right but it would only be after my questioning. He is in cahoots with some of our own enemies. I need information from him. Athena frowned but nodded her head, that is understandable. She then got up from her chair and said, I must be leaving now. My father has asked me to prepare Olympus should it become ugly. Farewell, gentlemen. She then left in a flash of golden light, however no one in the bar noticed it. Naruto then turned to Itaki and said, good work convincing the Olympians. From what I heard they are a stubborn bunch. Itaki responded, it was a problem. 
They wouldn't allow me to speak to them as they thought of me as a mortal. I had to force myself in along with Athena before Zeus was impressed enough to speak with me. I told them of the threat they were facing along with the proof of my claim and thus you see the result before you. Naruto nodded his head, good work. Though I am surprised that Zeus was being reasonable to you. From what I heard, denial is his first policy. Itaka shook his head and said, he was still one of the more reasonable bunch that let me speak. Though the same could not be said for the queen of the gods. Hera was already cursing me and tried to kill me for insinuating her son as a criminal that would cooperate with their worst enemies. Naruto nodded his head and understood what Itaka was talking about. Naruto then asked, so what do we know? I want you to give a full account of what happened. Itaka nodded his head and started off. As you may already know, Ares has been seen with suspicious company for the past few months, amassing a lot of gods that had hatred for the Olympians. A black man seemed to accompany him sometimes but his features were not recognizable. Naruto nodded his head, that's what Pan said to us. Go on. Itaka nodded his head, yes. He or Zetsu did a good job in keeping their plans silent. The Olympians were not aware of this all along. Itasai then said, and recently, an assembly was made among the twelve Olympians under the request of Zeus. It seemed that they had some skirmishes with the nearby Roman faction and he wanted to discuss on how to proceed with it. Itaka continued, so the assembly convened. During the assembly, Ares was persistent on going to war with the Roman faction under the reasons that they had insulted the honor of the Greek gods and must pay. While this was his usual behavior, Zeus did see an unusual glint in his eyes as he said that. However, Athena stood on the opposite end of the spectrum and instead asked to negotiate with the Roman faction instead of war. The assembly was decided by vote and the majority went in favor of Athena's opinion than that of Ares. Ares was not pleased and left the court with an indignant look. Naruto asked. So, Ares was behind this skirmish, Itaka said, undoubtedly. The timing of the skirmish is also too much of a coincidence with recent events being as they were while it was not known who attacked first, whether it was the Romans or the Greeks, Ares joined the battle later on and fought for the Greeks and repelled the Romans. Some of the gods were pissed and still took the side of Ares but luck was on our side as the majority were still thinking it through and took Athena's side. Naruto asked, wait. If it was not known who it was that started the battle, why did Ares claim that the Romans insulted the Greeks? Was the insult part not due to their attacking? Itaka shook his head and said, it was on Ares' account that one of the Romans talked a little too much about the Greeks as trash talk on the battle which was witnessed by many others who support that. The Romans were always not on the good side of the Greeks as both of these two pantheons had always fought for territory. Thus the majority came to believe that it was the Romans that attacked first. Naruto frowned. He asked, so what happened afterward? Itaka continued, investigations were made by Athena on the behalf of Zeus who in the meantime contacted the Roman gods. It was at that time we contacted each other. I explained the situation to her and about my hunch about Ares being involved. Thus we cooperated and found out that it was truly under Ares' instigation that caused this incident, from one of the traitors of the Roman faction. The traitor immediately talked once we captured and interrogated him. We informed the council about our findings together. Hera was opposed to my presence in the court and denied my proofs vehemently. However the others did find the proofs I gave acceptable enough to put Ares in a bad light. The bartender came by and refilled Naruto's drink as request by him. Itaka continued, the council asked Ares to respond but he didn't make any excuse. He immediately attacked Hermes who was nearby. However as soon as Zeus tried to capture him, some of the minor gods like Morpheus, Nemesis arrived at the court and attacked them while defending Ares. Ares then made a declaration of war against the Olympians publicly claiming that they are behind the times and have grown weak and escaped the place. Thus we come to where we are now. Naruto frowned and nodded his head. He then thought of something and then asked, have you heard from Pan? Itaka shook his head and said, no, I haven't heard from him in a while. I wanted to ask the same thing to you. Naruto said, something important like this. He must have informed about it to me. That only means that he's in a dangerous position. Itaka nodded his head grimly. Naruto then sighed and asked, All right then. Did you find anything else? Itaka shook his head and said, No, that's all I have on Ares right now. We most likely assume that he's freed some of the titans in Tartarus. Though we don't know who. We have no idea about where he is or what he's doing. Naruto frowned and said, All right then. 
Inform me when you find something new. Fortunately Pan still has my marker on him. I will try to sense and find him as soon as I can. Itaka said, alright grandpa. He then disappeared via Shunshin leaving Naruto to have his drink quietly. With Kiba, it has been a few hours since Kiba ran out from the club room. It was late in the evening and it had already started raining. The darkness was something that Kiba needed as he found solace in that. He walked the streets in drenched clothes thinking hard about something. However he was no longer alone as he finally noticed something, well more like someone. How long do you plan on standing there, getting drenched in the rain? He noticed that it was Naruto standing there wearing a black trench coat and an umbrella. Kiba noted that he was unusually having a cigar in his mouth. Naruto then took out the cigar from his mouth and breathed out some smoke. He then asked, I dash said Kiba. Walk with me Kiba, said Naruto interrupting Kiba's talk. Kiba shook his head and said, it's fine. I know I may have reacted a bit badly off but just leave me alone. I'll be back to normal by tomorrow and apologize to Rias. Naruto said, I wasn't asking Kiba. I was telling you. Kiba then looked at Naruto who had a look in his eyes that it was final. Kiba reluctantly relented and then took Naruto's offer as they shared the umbrella. They walked in silence as they made their way to an open 711 store. They took shelter from the rain outside. Naruto looked at the dark sky filled with millions of drops. He then asked, do you know something kid? Kiba looked at him and asked, what is it? Naruto said, I never would have guessed wearing a trench coat and having an umbrella while roaming around in the rain with a cigar on hand would make me look shady. I was stopped by a police officer who was patrolling nearby and asked for ID proof. Thank God I had my worker ID. The guy was prepared to have me incarcerated in jail as he said that I looked like some gangster. Kiba snorted and asked, well, what did you expect? Naruto said, well, I don't know. Maybe I looked a little cool for this weather? Sheesh. People go ahead and start suspecting people left and right. Kiba said, you are dressed like a creepy guy right now. I don't blame them Naruto pouted and then crouched down with many rain clouds forming on his head. Kiba who saw that display put up by Naruto got a laugh from the situation. Naruto got up smiling. He then ruffled the kid's head and asked, so, have you cooled down a bit? Kiba nodded his head, yeah, thanks, I really needed that laugh. Naruto grinned and said, I am glad. He then turned back his attention to the clouds. He said, Rias told me about your past. Kiba said, she did, did she? Naruto nodded his head, don't blame her. She was just looking out for you. Besides I was the one that asked her to tell me about you. Kiba then remained silent and asked, what do you want to say? Spill it out. Naruto then turned towards Kiba and said, I want you to give up this notion of revenge. Kiba frowned and shook his head and said, that's not possible. Naruto looked at him hard. He saw the unwavering conviction on Kiba's face and then sighed. He then added, well, I thought you would say that. Very well, go ahead. Kiba had a look of surprise and asked, you aren't going to convince me otherwise. Naruto shook his head, no I can't and I won't. You are already dead set on this path of yours. I can't change your mind once it's set on something, no matter how foolish the entire thing seems. Kiba said, it is not foolish. You weren't there to witness what was done to me, to the others. You weren't there when they threw us away. All because of those swords. You have no right to judge. What I seek is justice. Naruto gave an intense glare at Kiba and then said, don't embellish your notion of revenge with justice, boy. There is a very large between the two. Justice is not what you seek right now, just cold-hearted revenge. It is evident from how you are fueled by your hatred for the holy swords. Kiba snorted and said, what would you know? You have never experienced the things I have gone through or the pain I have experienced. It was at that moment that Naruto snapped. He said, I haven't experienced pain. How dare you? Do you think that you are the only one in the world that knows this kind of pain while all the others have lived in a fairy tale? Do you even know one instance of my life or what I am or what I have experienced to come stand where I am now? Well, do you? Kiba knew that he had crossed the line with his words and then remained silent. Naruto not retracting his glare, then said, let me tell you a story boy. There were once two boys living in a village. Each had experienced their own share of pain. One decided to act on his pain and fuel his hate toward the object of his pain, while the other decided to ignore the pain and decided to move on from it. 
The one that held it hatred wanted revenge, the one who ignored the pain and started to move on with his life led a happy one. Even if the object of his pain was nearby, he decided to forgive them for his own sake if not for them. He soon became respected and led a happy life in the village. While the other one's thirst for revenge was so great that he decided to cut off all ties from the village in his quest for seeking blood. He then soon got his revenge by ending the object of his pain. However it was then he realized the truth. Naruto then looked long and hard at Kiba and said, he realized that all he found in the end was emptiness and sorrow. His revenge had been a hollow quest as in his hatred he failed to realize that the true object of his pain was not the one he thought but someone else entirely. He finally understood what he had lost. Kiba remained silent. Naruto then continued, I want you to think on something. Is revenge that you seek is what your fellow victims would want or what you want? He then looked at Kiba and said, I have said enough. If you think that what you seek is right, then follow up on it but in your hatred don't allow yourself to go ahead and destroy everything that you have made. If not for your sake then for the sake of your friends. Kiba remained silent as Naruto left the front of the convenience store. The rain had stopped as Naruto walked away with his umbrella retracted leaving Kiba to think about his actions for the uncertain future. Meanwhile in Greece, Naruto went to a quiet and desolate place in the ruins of Greece and started meditating. He then went into sage mode. He knew that the only way to find Pan was using the marker. He was finally able to sense Pan along with his marker. He thought of teleporting there immediately but felt against it. He then silently moved along the path to his marker. He then found himself in one of the forests of Greece. More specifically in the Didaya Forest Reserve in Thrace. He slowly entered the forest by the entrance. On the outside, there seemed to be nothing unusual about it. However once he went in, he found out that there was a barrier in a particular area that prevented anyone from entering. It was well hidden and the barrier they used was complex. However Naruto knew how to remove part of the barrier as he knew that it was made using Fuinjutsu. He muttered, no wonder, the Greeks are having a hard time finding this place. It seems Zetsu supplied them with a barrier seal to keep them hidden. Naruto knew that even he would find it difficult to find this place in his normal mode as he wouldn't know what he was searching for. Naruto undid part of the seal silently and entered inside. He then went forward to find a camp in the middle of one of the valleys. The entire area seemed to be bustling with activity. Naruto made his way towards the camp silently before encountering a pair of patrolling guards at the border. The guards looked human enough but even Naruto could tell that the pair were demigods. He heard them say, do you know when we are going to attack MT Olympus? Soon. I heard that once Lord Ares prepares to free Cronus from Tartarus, we would rain upon those fools sitting on their thrones. Naruto thought, so Ares still hasn't released Cronus. The other guard said, good. Now we just have to take care of that traitor Pan. The first one agreed, yes. Though I still don't understand why Lord Ares has kept him prisoner. The second guard said, they said that Lord Ares and Lord Prometheus wish to interrogate him. Apparently they want information on the one who ratted them out to the Olympians. Naruto thought, damn it. He go ahead and got himself caught. Naruto then soon followed after the two guards to find an opportunity to assault them. However his patience ran out. He threw a stone at a nearby area. The guard who heard that gasped, what was that? The other guard was a bit lax and said, probably just a wild animal of some kind. The first guard didn't buy it and then said, wait here. I'll go check it out. We can't risk the Olympians finding us now. The second one just nodded his head. The first guard soon went into the bushes as the second one waited. The second waited for a while before he called, hey. Did you find something? However there was no response. The second guard grew suspicious and then went to the bushes to find the first one. With a spear on the ready. The second guard slowly approached the area. He then saw something behind the branches. He shouted, hey. Is that you? However he still didn't get any response. Thus he believed that it was an intruder and quickly approached the place before the first guard suddenly appeared in front of him with his spear on his neck. The first one said, easy. It's just me. The second one slowly let down his spear looking at the person, why the hell didn't you respond when I called you? The first one said, I was taking a quick leak. I can't go ahead and shout it out, can I? The second one grunted. He then said, next time, you do something like this, tell me before you decide to do it, alright. Okay. The two of them left the place. 
However what the second guard didn't notice was that there was an unconscious body of the first guard under the tree, all tied up from head to toe. Sometime later, Naruto had disguised himself using the transformation as the patrolling guard he knocked out and entered the camp. He was then let off duty as soon as he came there and told to take some time off. Naruto thought, alright, infiltration successful. Now to find out where they are keeping Pan. Naruto looked around the camp and found that it was huge. The place was not a camp but a fortress. There were a lot of buildings around with a lot of races mixed inside. He knew that if he had to find Pan, it was only through sage mode again. But then again he didn't want to risk detection from the more nature sensitive beings in the camp. Thus he had to do this the old fashioned way. Naruto roamed around camp avoiding the eyes of the other races. He then found a heavily guarded building with guards in the front. He then went in front and tried to enter the building but was blocked by the guards. One of them asked, hold. What is your business here? Naruto gave a wry smile and said, I am sorry, but I have something important to report to Lord Ares. I am new here and I want to find his quarters but I can't seem to find it. Since this is heavily guarded, I assumed, this is where he must be. The guard gave a scrutinizing eye and then responded, Lord Ares's residence is over there. However you are in luck right now, as he is just inside interrogating prisoner. The guard then opened the doors and then said, come inside. I will lead you to him. Naruto nodded his head and then went inside. The guard then soon led him underground with cells on either sides of them. Most of them were empty but Naruto could see that they once had living prisoners inside as their bones still remained. Naruto then came upon a door with person outside. The person asked, why are you here and not in your outpost? The guard lowered his head and said, I am sorry warden but this one here had a message for Lord Ares and it seemed to be urgent. Thus I led him here as soon as I could. The warden said, is that so? He then said, very well then, you may enter. Naruto sensed the marker in the room and entered it and found an unconscious pan but not Ares. He then turned to the warden and asked, wait. I asked to meet with Lord Ares. Not the prisoner. Lord Ares is currently unavailable. Let me entertain you in his stead. Naruto then saw a black haired man coming out from the darkness wearing a toga that covered only his privates. He was very muscular and his eyes had an intelligent look. It was then that Naruto realized, so it was a trap. The man said, I'm afraid it's so. Naruto then asked, so would you mind introducing yourselves? The man smiled and then said politely, ah. Where are my manners? My name is Prometheus, the titan of forethought. It is certainly a pleasure to meet you Mr. Intruder. Mind taking your disguise off? Karama said, why is it that whenever I wake up, I always find you in some kind of trouble, kid? Naruto said, I have asked myself that same question plenty of times before. Naruto was within the room with an unconscious pan and a titan who had a weird glint in his eyes. Karama in his mind complained to him, way to go. You just fell into an obvious trap. Naruto retorted, I knew the risk involved, that's why I took precautions. However thinking about that right now is futile. We need to get Pan and jump away from here. Agreed. Naruto looked on at Prometheus, the titan of forethought who was looking back at him. Promotheus then asked, well, my dear sir, I have been polite enough to introduce myself. Won't you honor my request, Mr. Uzumaki? Naruto started chuckling and turned back into himself. He then said, well, you got me. Though I have got to say, I didn't know that I was expected. Promotheus smiled and said, that you are Mr. Uzumaki. We knew that you were coming for a long time now, ever since we found Pan with one of your so-called ceiling tags. We have been watching your movements. Naruto thought, so the entire thing is compromised. Karama nodded his head and said, our enemies seems to have a better information network here. We should have been more careful. Promotheus then added, you had a very good disguise on you but I have the ability to see through illusions and disguises through my domain. To obtain clarity. That's why I was able to catch you at the entrance of the prison. Naruto then added, so what would you like to talk about? I am sure you weren't very open about how you were able to catch me without reason. Promotheus looked and asked, an astute observation. Well, my first question would be, who are you? And I mean collectively. Naruto raised an eyebrow and asked, what do you mean? Promotheus replied, I know for a fact that you aren't from around here Mr. Uzumaki. I am a titan who is rather well informed about the other pantheons and factions and none of those match the description of what you do. 
So, there you have my question. Who are you? Why are you here? Naruto asked, why does it matter? Promotheus replied, well, curiosity for one. And second. I need to know what kind of person I am looking here. I need to know what kind of person I am working with. Naruto asked, isn't it a little too late to choose sides? Promotheus replied, late yes but not that late. The tides of the war can still be changed even if said change is by a hair's breadth. Naruto didn't answer. Promotheus continued on, as you may know, Ares is intending to release some of my old brethren from their imprisonment in Tartarus. Naruto replied, the other titans. Cronus, Gaia, and Atlas. Promotheus nodded his head and said, indeed. But personally, I prefer that things be the way they are. Goodness knows what chaos Cronus will do once he is back. Naruto then asked, so then why did you choose this side? If you are against the titans, then you would have sided with the Greek gods. Promotheus nodded his head, Mr. Uzumaki, I am neutral. I have no love for both the gods and the titans. I joined the side which I saw had more chances of winning. I saw that the Greek gods had no chance of winning this war because of their ignorance. Naruto then asked, then what has changed? Promotheus added, well the answer is rather obvious, is it not? You, Mr. Uzumaki. You are the wild card. Someone whose potential has never been assessed. You being involved in this mess changes things. Naruto remained silent. He was looking at Pan. Promotheus then went on continuing, so will you answer me now? Who are you? Karama told to him, I think it's best you told him Naruto. Why, asked Naruto with an incredulous expression. Information, that's why. We need to know what Zetsu is up to. Besides I don't sense any ill intent from him. Naruto nodded his head. He then sighed, all right. We'll keep out the major details. Naruto then looked at Promotheus and said, all right. I will give you the information you need but in return, I need to know what your partner had asked of you. Promotheus looked at Naruto and said, fair enough. Naruto then told Promotheus, I'll keep this short. You have already guessed the most. I am not from this world and so is your partner. We call ourselves Shinobi and we are from a parallel universe, a place called the Elemental Nashio Year Part was on the servant of an Eni of that world and sought destroy it. I fear that he and his master intend to do the same. There is a chance world may also be involved. Promotheus put his hand under his chin and adopted a thinking pose while closing his eyes to digest what he had heard. A few seconds later he removed himself from the pose and then looked at Naruto. He said, I can understand if they targeted yours but why should they target this world? Naruto replied, it's because this world has something they want. Promotheus asked, and what is it that they want? Naruto replied, power at the expense of the rest of the world. Promotheus looked at Naruto with a critical eye. He then said, all right. I'll help you. Your partner has already proven himself to be resourceful and if he fears you, then there is no question that you are a threat to him. Naruto looked at Promotheus and said, thank you. Promotheus shook his head and said, don't thank me yet. Ares is moving to Tartarus to free Cronus as we speak but will still be some time. It will be about three to four days before he reaches there as he is moving in quietly, away from the gods' attention. I will tell you everything you need to know once we take care of this mess. Promotheus then shared Naruto a bracelet. He touched it reveal a blue globe and a green dot at one part. He said, this bracelet has the tracker I planted on Ares just in case things went awry. It will show you the direction you need to go. You will know where to find him. Naruto nodded his head and kept the bracelet in his pocket. Promotheus then said, you need to get out of here with Pan. I'll cause a distraction and stall for time. All forms of magic is cut off in this room but that shouldn't be too much of a problem for you, right? Naruto nodded and said, thank you. He then moved forward towards Pan and placed a hand on him. He then said to Promotheus, I'll find you when the time comes. Promotheus nodded. Naruto then teleported out of the room along with Pan by using the Flying Thunder God technique. Kyuahu, the clone Naruto was minding his own business back in Kyuahu doing menial jobs around the school. Being a gardener doesn't mean that he only tends to the school gardens. There are times when the school asks him to work around during his free time as they need an extra hand doing these jobs. Naruto does these jobs as he didn't have anything better to do and also because he can earn a few extra change. The feeling of achievement he gets when he does the job, 
that sense of satisfaction of earning the money is also one of the other reasons he does this job. Anyway, Naruto was done with these jobs by evening when some of the people he worked with called him. One of the laborers said, Hey Naruto. Me and the boys here are going out for a drink. Wanna come along? Naruto who was a little thirsty for a drink thought it would be a good idea to relax. He said, alright. But let me tell you, I am not paying for the drinks. Haha. <laughs> sure. Hajimi is paying. Isn't that right, Hajimi? Ah. Come on man. I paid for our drinks last time, said the man named Hajimi. And who is it that suggested for going out to drink, eh, asked the first worker. Well. Said Hajimi as he scratched his neck. Kurama told Naruto, are you really planning on going out to drink with the way things are? Yeah, I need a drink. Besides, I have nothing else to do anyway replied Naruto Kurama told, if you are going out to drink, then I am not helping with the detox. Naruto asked, what? Why? Kurama replied, because each time you go out to drink, you end up being drinking too much that you couldn't even stand properly. You seriously have no self-control. Naruto replied, what are you talking about? I have plenty of self-control. Kurama mocked, oh yes. You are the very definition of it. That is not having any self-control at all in whatever tasks you do. May it be training, or doing your job as hookage. You always try to do too much. If any other person in the elemental nations trained as you did, they would be buried six feet under even before their career began. You were lucky because of your heritage and because of me being within you. Naruto couldn't refute Kurama as what he said was true. He then said, ah. Come on old pal, don't be such a sour puss. It's only going to be a little bit. Kurama snorted and said, you say that every time and every time I have to end up using my chakra to heal your sorry ass. Not this time. If you go out to drink, you're on your own. It's time you learned some discipline. Naruto said, fine. Drama queen, I don't need your help. I'll show you that I can take care of myself. How hard do you think it's going to be? Kurama snorted and chuckled under his breath in a mocking manner. What Naruto didn't realize was that you can never be not drunk when going out with a group and it will always come back to bite you in the ass. Meanwhile in Greece, meanwhile the real Naruto was in a hospital back in Athens while looking over at Pan who was sleeping in a white bed from outside a glass window. Itaka was by his side. Naruto then asked, what did Apollo say? Itaki replied, good news is that he will survive. He mostly has surface injuries that can be healed. But the bad news is he has been put under some kind of induced coma. They say that there are signs that his mind has been examined and tampered with. Apollo suspects that they have used a rare herb that grows in Tartarus for doing that. Mental injuries and traumas are difficult to recover from, even for a god. It will be some time before he wakes up. Naruto sighed. I thought of obtaining some details as to what Zetsu has planned through Pan but now it seems impossible. Itaki remained silent. Naruto then continued, anyway, have you told the Olympians of what I had found? Itaki replied, yes. They has given permission for you to enter Tartarus, Hades will show you the path to wherever you want to go. However they won't be able to help you once you are there as the gods can be easily detected in Tartarus. So it would be like you asked. No one to interfere. Naruto said, excellent. Itaka then added, and one more thing. Naruto asked, what is it? Itaka said, be careful grandpa. Something doesn't feel right with this. Naruto asked, do you think it might be a trap? Itaka nodded his head, I think he plans on using us somehow and I don't like it. It was kind of convenient for him to have a bracelet that tracks Ares on hand. Naruto seemed to be of the same mind as Itaka. He said, I know. Even if his goals are obscure, they seem to align with ours. Kurama said that he had felt no ill intentions from him. Itaka nodded his head. He said, it's best we leave soon. Hades is not a patient man from what I have seen. Naruto nodded, all right. Itaki and Naruto made their way out of the hospital and to a back alley. A shady man was standing at the alley. He came up to Itaki and said, this the guy. Itaki nodded his head. The character said, follow me. Naruto and Itaka followed the character through a bunch of streets and finally came to a rather plain old inn. It read in Greek, the soul's rest the character pointed at Naruto and said, only him so loud. Itaka nodded his head and said, be careful, Naruto nodded his head and said, find out if we can somehow help Pan. 
We owe him that. Itaki replied, I'll work on it. Naruto then said to the shady character, Well then, shall we move on? The character grunted and opened the door to the inn. Naruto saw that it was a dimly lit place with a stereotypical Shakespearean setting. There were a lot of candles and some skulls. The whole place shone with an eerie shade of gold. He saw that only two people were in the establishment having a cup of tea. He was a brown-haired pale-looking man with golden eyes wearing a red suit and had a fashionable beard on his face. He also had a golden cane with a gold skull as a handle. Beside the man was a beautiful woman with a wavy dark green hair and an angular face. Her skin was white with green iris matching the shade of her hair. She was wearing a yellow one-piece that showed plenty of her curves. Naruto couldn't help but admiring the woman and his gaze didn't go unnoticed by the man beside him. I suppose you are the chap, right? If you have finished checking out my wife, you can be on our way immediately said the man in the red suit. Naruto blushed at the comment. He then said to the lady, I am sorry ma'am, I didn't mean to stare. The lady said, it's Persephone, my dear sir and it's alright, I don't mind. No harm is done. Naruto nodded and then turned to the annoyed man. He said, you must be Lord Hades. I am sorry for being rude to you. The man huffed and then waved his hands. He said, don't worry, you aren't the first one who did that. Now, why don't we get this thing done with? He then used the cane and touched the ground which then used a magic circle to open a gateway. Hades said, Tartarus is a treacherous place as you may have heard. A mortal soul will be bound to that place if one gets killed there. Be warned. You will never know peace if that happens. Naruto nodded as he entered the gateway leaving behind Persephone and Hades to have their tea in solitude. Kyoah, boy heat did we have, eh eh. Good time, said Naruto as he slurred under the effects of the alcohol in his system. Yeah, said one of the workers who also had difficulty standing up. He then went by to a nearby dumpster to then puke. Naruto was completely wasted. He couldn't even stand properly much less walk Naruto then saw the entire world spin. Kurama who saw the mess that was Naruto thought, I told that this would happen. Is this that regular, asked Matatabi. Kurama replied, as regular as brushing your teeth or washing your clothes. He does this every time he goes out to drink and now he's more drunk than he was ever before. The workers who came with Naruto left the bar leaving Naruto by his lonesome self. He didn't think properly and was moving haphazardly towards the school. He thought, hungry, need some food. Matatabi said, I think it's best if we heal him. Kurama was about to agree to what she said before he noticed something. He grinned evilly and then said, No I think that it's time Naruto was taught a lesson. Matatabi said, By doing what? To see him wake up embarrassed with his own puke on his face. Kurama replied, To have him understand the effects what will happen to the world due to the consequences of his own actions. Besides if I thinking right, this could be fun. Matatabi didn't understand what Kurama was saying. However she soon felt some powerful signatures. She understood what Kurama was doing. She said, you're evil, Kurama. Oh I know. Naruto was unaware of the conversation that happened on in between Kurama and Matatabi. He went on back to school not being aware of the turmoil going on inside. He was somehow able to go back to his room and find his bed. He said, need, food, but, to, sleep hikii. He just fell on his bed face first. He thought will eat tomorrow. However his beauty sleep was interrupted when he heard a loud boom coming from the school grounds. He woke back up groggily with a pissed off look. He was still drunk, so everything was in kind of a haze. He waltzed through the corridors and finally arrived at the place. He was so sleepy that he didn't even bother looking who was there. He said, keep it down. Can't you hexi underscore hek triple a man is sleeping over here e. He then looked at what was going on. The problem with Naruto was that this time, he was way drunk than he was ever before that he couldn't even recognize the people before him. He started hallucinating things. His gaze was then fixed on a thing in the middle. He saw it was a unique crow with five pairs of wings. He thought, crows, not chicken or turkey, but still delicious, barbecued crow, no boiled crow, no. Crow biryani it is. And that line of thought was the start of all the chaos that followed. Naruto was moving about in the plains of Tartarus following the beacon that leads him to Ares. He has been following behind Ares for about 5 hours now but from what Hades told, time moves faster in Tartarus. 
the relative difference is about 10 times or so, he figured that it wouldn't have even been an hour back in the real world. And speaking of Tartarus, Naruto finally saw it firsthand on how it looked like. It was a wasteland. And the temperatures varied continuously. One moment it was hot as hell and the next moment it was freezing cold. No life form other than the monsters could sustain to the extreme temperatures of the place. He had dealt with a dozen low-leveled hellhounds and some other monsters while quietly taking care to be as quiet as possible as he didn't want to alert anyone of his presence. He ran and ran on the wasteland and finally arrived at a giant mountain. Naruto looked at the bracelet and saw the projection. He then said, just over this mountain, is it? He knew that he was nearing his target thus started to tread carefully to the place. The mountain he was about to scale was not small, however it was not large either. Naruto slowly started to scale the mountain. He went in slowly careful not to trigger any traps or alarms just in case Ares decided to be cautious. The mountain was mostly rocky with no life forms but Naruto could feel an evil aura coming off from it. However he knew that Tartarus was a strange and dangerous place so he didn't think much of it. It was then he slowly reached the middle of the mountain. Unusually there wasn't any monsters anywhere near the mountain, thus it was easy for him to climb that. However the odd thing about the place was the amount of chains on place. It seemed as if the entire mountain was bound to something. He then was nearing the peaks of the mountain. It was then he heard a couple of sounds, quiet you lot, man who Naruto and Tafai Naruto quickly stopped and decided to hide. From a hidden spot, he was able to spy on an auburn. The man was wearing golden armor and each having the symbol of a dog on them. Naruto spotted three others with very unusual appearances but he identified each of them to be the minor gods of the Greek faction. The aquamarine blue-haired one with a flute on his bearing being Morpheus, the god of dreams. The deep red-haired woman with a symbol of the scales on her being, Nemesis, the goddess of vengeance. Naruto identified the final bald-headed man with a muscular body and the symbol of a charging ram as Kratos, the god of strength. This is an actual god of Greek mythos if you guys don't know and not Kratos from Gao series, each of them having a different expression on their face, however Naruto could detect fear was most predominant on them. Nemesis spoke, my lord, is it wise to release Lord Cronus this soon? We still haven't prepared. Ares cut her off and said, I said it's time. We can't wait any longer. Olympus is already on our trail. Morpheus argued, but my lord. Ares cut them off once again and said, Silence. My decision is final. All three of them bowed their heads and said, As you wish, Lord Ares. Naruto could see the begrudging look on their face as they said so. He then watched Ares look at his direction. Naruto saw this and thought, How the hell did he find me? Look closely kid, he isn't looking at you. Naruto then finally noticed that Ares was not looking at him even though he was looking at his direction. Ares started saying, Oh great and mighty Cronus, the king of titans, the reaper of time, I, your grandson, Ares, have come to free you of the shackles that bind you to this infernal realm so that we may take back what is rightfully yours from those who had betrayed you. Now awaken from your slumber. He then took out a dagger from his hand and then slashed his hand spilling drop of blood on the ground. Once the blood was spilled on the ground, the mountain seemed to start quaking. Naruto thought, what the hell? The ground started to shake even more. Naruto asked, Karama. Can you explain to me what the hell is going on? Karama replied, I think this isn't just a mountain brat. Naruto asked, if this isn't mountain, then what the hell are we, however his question was cut off when his senses picked up something. He looked to his side and noticed a huge rock like head with two hole like eyes which shone an eerie green light. It was then he realized what he was standing on, spear and shield on him oh fuck. Kyoha Academy, Kakabile was pretty satisfied with the way things had gone off. He was pretty skeptic with how smooth it has gone as he knew that there was an unknown factor in Kyoha. While Azazel was pretty secretive, Kakabile did find out the existence of a user of Senjutsu in Kyoha but unfortunately, he hadn't found out who it was. This factor had been very thorough in hiding his identity and was very elusive but that didn't matter to Kakabile right now as his plan has gone off perfectly. The attack at the academy went smooth and the sister of the Lucifer had been trapped. Now all that was left was to kill them off as soon as he could. But first, let's play with them. On the side of Rias and Ko along with Zenovia and Irina, things weren't looking good. They were trapped with no reinforcements in sight. Rias said, alright, this is it guys. We are about to face a big gun, so go all out. 
We need to hold out for a little while until Sana calls out to either my brother or her sister to come here. Yes president, said Issei activating his boosted gear. Rias smiled and said, Issei, I need you to dash, however even before she finished, Freed with his Excalibur attacked them but they dodged at the right time. He said, TCH TCH, little shitty devils, do you think I would give you time to plan? He then went on to the supposed weak link of the group, being Issei. Issei did his best to dodge Freed before he was boosted enough. Boost. Alright, my time to shine. He then started attacking Freed with vigor. Left jab, right hook, dodge a sword slash, and finally a left uppercut throwing Freed off balance. Issei finally finished I with a rotating roundhouse kick making Freed fly a few meters before he regained his balance. Alright, go Issei, shouted Asia Freed got up while spitting out some blood and said, I guess you are worth to test out my new blade eh, you shitty devil. He then quickly moved forward to attack Issei however Kiba intervened. He said, Issei, can you leave these guys to me? I have something of a personal business to tend to with these two. Issei nodded his head. After all, he did team up with the exorcists to help with Kiba's revenge. Kiba then looked at Freed and said, I am going to break that sword and move on with my life. This ends now. Freed manically laughed and said, Ha 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 ha, how funny. You can be a good stand-up comedian if you changed your expressions a little but excuse me, I forgot. How can you? You are just a shitty devil servant to that red. Head slut over there. Kiba attacked him calmly and said, has anyone ever told that you talk a little too much? Zenovia also joined in on Kiba and said, allow me to help you shut it. Freed laughed, oh goody goody. A shitty devil and a prickly exorcist working together, what a great combination. Valper who had remained silent on the sides joined in and laughed. He shouted, ha ha ha, let me test my new sword too. Meanwhile on the side of Rias, Issei, Akeno, Irina, Konako, and Asia, they were facing Kakabile with gusto. Each of them were doing their best where Asia stood as support along with Issei who stood as guard and support for the rest while the rest were focused on assault. However the opponent they were facing was still better than them by miles. Irina soon fell unconscious when she hit her head after taking an attack from Kakabile. She was brought back to Asia by Issei who then started to focus more on assault. They then tried to finish him off with a boosted attack from Rias and Akeno who combined their magic. Meanwhile Kiba and Zenovia had finished off Freed and Valper after Kiba used his sacred gear to create a holy devil sword. Kakabile didn't expect this. He knew that these kids were strong from the recording of their match against Riser Fenex. However he didn't expect this level of strength from them. His plans were starting to get thrown off, but it was not fear or anxiety that dominated his mind, but excitement. He looked at the group and then started chuckling, great, great. You are all a great source of entertainment. Give me more. Konako said, Monster. Rias said, Why are you doing this? Kakabile then stated his reason, Why? Why? What other reason is there to live other than battle, fight, kill? To fight the other beings who are of equal power in mortal combat. What other reason is there? I want it back. I want the war between the three factions. The fear, the excitement, the chaos. I want those back. Rias who heard the reasons shouted in anger, you. You would want a war that would cause so many deaths just so that you could entertain yourselves. Zenovia then said, God will never allow you to do this. He'll surely stop you. Kakabile laughed, ha 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 ha. What a lovely maiden you are. Still believing in a being who's already been dead for quite a few centuries. Rias shouted, what? Kakabile said, oh my. You don't know do you? Of course you don't. After all, it was supposed to be a joint secret between the three factions to not cause chaos within the ranks but all secrets must come out at some point, don't the? Yes. God is dead. Killed by my very own hand. Asia broke down and muttered, no, I it can't be. Zenovia followed her and said, heavens save us. Rias shouted at Kakabile in anger, Asia. You. You'll pay for hurting my servants Kakabile. Mark my words. You. Will. Pay. Kakabile laughed off as he said, yes. Yes. Denial. Fear. Anger. Hey. Give me a battle I can remember, ah but it seems your servants can't take much more. Rias then saw Okeno and Issei collapse due to exhaustion. Konako had already taken too much damage from the battle before. 
Zenovia could also no longer hold on and was knocked out due to the shock given by Kakabaya added with the exhaustion from the previous battle. Rias gritted her teeth. Kakabaya laughed, well, it seems like your end is now Gremory, prepare to dash, however he was cut off when he heard a sound, keep it down. Can't you Heeksy underscore Heek triple A man is sleeping over here e. Kakabaya thought, what the who the fuck is this drunk? How the hell did he get inside and is he wearing, boxers? Rias who saw the state Naruto was in was too confused. On one hand, she was relieved that Naruto had come but on the other hand, he was drunk. And more so, the dude was in his boxers. Naruto then took out a bottle of sake out of nowhere and began drinking. He looked at Kakabile with an inquisitive eye while swaying from side to side. He then joined his hands to form something like a camera and then looked Kakabile through it. He said, target locked. Nice wings, hmm. <laughs> I guess roasting will be better. Kakabile who looked at Naruto laughed at Rias, is this your reinforcement Gremory? Color me impressed, you managed to find a drunk worse than Azazel. How many bottles do you bet he had before this fight? Rias shook her head. She didn't even want to comment on anything Kakabile. She looked at Naruto and held up two of her fingers. She asked, Mr. Naruto, can you tell me how many fingers I am holding up now? Naruto swayed from side to side with a bottle in hand. With hand movements that would have made Captain Jack Sparrow proud, he slurred, 6, no oh he dash, 9, he he he, 69, he he he. Rias sighed and then said, Mr. Naruto can you please get back? I am thankful that you somehow came to us in our time of need but you are in no condition to fight. However at that point Naruto didn't listen to whatever Rias said and looked at Kakabile long and hard. Kakabile noticed his unnerving gaze and got slightly serious. But Naruto then smiled the next moment before he shouted, Hey dumb crow. Why don't you come here quietly so that I can quickly finish you off? I promise that it will be painless. Kakabile was angered. He looked at the drunk fat looking Naruto and asked, Finish me off quickly? Surrender? You wasted son of a bitch. Were you not born with eyes when your whore of a mother gave birth to you? Who the fuck do you think you are talking to you, wastrel? Naruto turned silent and then looked down. He mumbled, what did you heek say? Kakabile then added more salt to the wound and said, didn't you hear me the first time? Or your ears are out of it too? I said dash however before Kakabile could finish off his sentence, he was blasted off a full kick to his abdomen. He went away flying before he crashed into a wall nearby. He spat some blood and came to look at Naruto who was right before his eyes. Naruto then said, no one ever insulted my heek mother like that. Absolutely no oni. You know whyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyy
Naruto then smiled and made a hand sign. He said, like this. Wood style, strangling vines. Immediately a bunch of wooden vines sprouted off the ground and targeted Kakabile like a homing system. Kakabile fight off the incoming vines that tried to grab him by using a light spear in hand and tried to cut them off. However when he cut one, two emerged from the same spot. One of them caught his left arm and wouldn't let go. Kakabile tried to cut the vine but he noticed another batch of branches were heading his way, thus he could only do one thing. He cut off his arm and took some distance using an emergency teleportation circle he prepared before. Once he got some distance between himself and Naruto, he immediately stopped the bleeding of his left arm. He noticed that annoying grin present on Naruto's face and was pissed. Strike that, he was too furious. Rage overtook reason and thus Kakabile no longer decided to hold back on his fire power. But, luck was not on his side that day as and when he powered up, he grunted. He thought, seems I expended more energy than I thought. Damn. Damn. No. Now is not the time to bitch and whine. I need to get rid off all of them quickly for that person's plan to work. I'll finish them off in one attack. He then looked at Naruto and prepared a huge light spear. He knew that his opponent was out of his league from just the way Naruto handled himself with unarmed combat thus he decided to go all out. He said, I commend you for making it this far but I have to say that this ends now. I had enough entertainment for one night, so perish. He then threw the light spear at Naruto. Rias and the others prepared a bunch of barriers to take cover but Naruto just stood there like a boss and looked at the spear heading straight his way. Once the spear neared him, he then kept a single finger forward. The spear stopped and a crater from the force was formed beneath Naruto. The spear shattered like glass as soon as it made contact with Naruto. Kakabile said, B but H how? That was my strongest spell. How can you survive against that with not even a single scratch? Naruto simply said, that's because he dash, he flashed in front of Kakabile and scared the shit of him. Naruto slowly whispered into the afraid Kakabile's ear, there's always someone heek stronger than you. Kakabile had his eyes widened. He then crawled back and away from Naruto. He then tried to run away using a teleportation magic but was stopped by Naruto at the last moment. Kakabile then started to beg for mercy, I don't know who you are, but please, don't kill me. I can't die here. I still have a lot to achieve. I'll give you anything. Anything you want, riches, power or women. Just name it and it shall be yours. Naruto looked at Kakabile for a while before he smiled at him. Kakabile took it as a good sign but he judged prematurely because Naruto did the most unpredictable thing like he always does. He ripped off Kakabile's clothes. Tartarus, as the events of Kyoga were going on, the original Naruto was facing a small trouble under the name of Ares, Cronus, and the three minor gods. Naruto said, well shit, guess I am in a pretty compromised position right now. Might want to consider scouting ahead next time you make a move brat. I was being cautious fuzzy. Who would have thunk that the mountain would end up to be Cronus himself? Karama sighed and said, forget it, now is not the time to debate about mistakes. We need to take care of this mess quickly as possible. Naruto then noticed the glimmering eyes of Cronus who had just awakened. The eyes shone a bit before a guttural voice said, who has awakened me from my eternal slumber? Hmm. <laughs> He then looked at the figures that were situated below and said, So, you were the ones that did so, are you? Speak. Why have you awakened me? Ares said, I have awakened you Lord Cronus, so that you may once again rule the mortal realm as the Titan King as it was yours by right. Cronus looked at Ares and said, Hmm? Is that right? But what do you gain by instating me as the ruler and opposing my sons and daughters with whom you share your blood? Ares made an annoyed face and said, the Olympians have grown soft over the years fearing the foreign influences. They are just a bunch of pussies not having the balls to take what's theirs. I for one am not going to be part of that group of cunts. I know I am powerless alone, that is why I wish to serve you, the king of all titans. The true ruler of the world. Allow me to serve under you so that I may gain you more glory and name to your being. Cronus who heard that gave a huge laugh and said, ha ha ha. Spoken like a true warrior. Very well. You shall be my general once you free me from these dastardly chains of mine. Karama said, I think Rockhead still hasn't noticed your presence on him, now's the chance to take them by Serp Dash, Cronus added at that moment, but first, can you care to explain who is this human that is daring enough to stand on my shoulder? Karama sighed and said, 
Never mind Ares looked at the spot and then finally noticed Naruto. He then looked at Naruto and said, well, well. So my bastard of a father had sent you as his whelp to take care of me, has he? I am not so surprised about you being here Naruto Izumaki. Naruto came out in plain sight and then said, so I take it you know me. The three other minor gods have already positioned themselves to engage in combat. Ares laughed and said, a mutual friend of ours have told a lot about you. Though I still don't see why he sees you as a threat. But I do concede, you did a very good job finding me. Naruto said, I aim to please. Ares mocked, clearly, if serving the Olympians as their hound is your goal. Naruto retorted, well, I ain't no hound to nobody but I sure am tracking down the Olympians lost dog. Ares said, why you dash Naruto then turned to Cronus, well, I suppose I should introduce myself to you, don't I Mr. Rockman? The name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I am here to bring our red-headed canine back to his owners. So I hope you would just go back to sleep. Cronus who heard the title gave an amused laugh. He then said, I quite like your sense of humor human. But sadly I have to decline. Naruto sighed and said, unfortunate. Ares then shouted at his subordinates, what in chaos's name are you doing standing there gawking? Get him. As soon as he said that the three minor gods attacked Naruto. Naruto saw that Kratos and Nemesis attacked him straight on. Kratos being the god of strength charged at him like a bull while Nemesis wielded a pair of swords in her hand. Naruto dodged both their attacks but Kurama warned from within, careful brat. Naruto noticed Kurama's warning and noticed something was off. It was then that he noticed that there was an illusion. As soon as he dispersed it, he narrowly dodged a slice attack from Nemesis but it did nick his neck. He looked at Morpheus who had a flute in his hand. Naruto thought, so he creates illusion through music is it? Similar to that girl who served Orochimaru before. Kurama nodded his head and said, you were lucky that I warned you, or that chick's blade would have sliced your neck clean off. Better finish off the flute guy soon. Naruto nodded his head. At that time Kratos decided to charge in again and this time he punched the ground underneath Naruto shattering it making Naruto fly above to dodge the projectiles launched by the devastating force with which Kratos hit the ground. However he soon found to be meeting another wave of illusion from Morpheus, this time in the form of sex chamber, but Naruto immediately dispelled the illusion and faced an attack from Nemesis who came from above. Naruto though caught her blade by the hand and then threw her to the ground. Naruto shouted after weaving through a bunch of seals, wood style, great forest emergence, suddenly, a great forest emerged from the ground engulfing all the participants into a forest that towered above the mountains in less than a second. The three minor gods tensed at the change in environment as it served to benefit their enemy. Naruto was alone like a predator watching his prey to strike at the right time. Naruto timed it right and immediately threw a bunch of kunao with his infamous Hyration seals wrapped around it. The minor gods dodged them. At that time, Ares who saw those seals, take care to note where those knives are. Those are teleport points for him. However his warning served fruitless as Naruto emerged from one of the kunao and immediately threw a smoke bomb at the spot. Ares coughed at the sudden ingestion of smoke but he immediately used his spear to create a gale which blew the smoke away. He then saw the three minor gods knocked out on the ground with Naruto standing alone like a boss. Cronus who saw this was amused. He said, it seems you have chosen your confidants rather poorly, my general. Ares shouted, useless bunch. You call yourselves gods but couldn't handle one mortal. Fine. I'll do this myself. He then equipped his shield and slowly moved forward towards Naruto. Naruto, with a kunao in hand then engaged in battle with Ares. Both of them fired their attacks at each other. Naruto with his ninjutsu and Ares with his magic. Flame dance. Water style, water shockwave. Blade trinity, earth style, mud wall. Each attack Ares made, Naruto countered it with not much effort. The battle went on for hours but Naruto wasn't in the slightest bit exhausted. The same couldn't be said for Ares who started to feel the drag after throwing dozens of powerful techniques at his opponent. At that moment, he started to feel the excitement like any other battle maniac. Ares laughed and said, excellent. Excellent. This is what I have longed for. Excitement. Fun. A fight of the ages. You are truly a worthy opponent, Uzumaki. Naruto replied, he he he, thanks, you're not bad yourself Ares, but I believe we need to end this, I got things to do and places to be. Ares laughed and said, ha ha ha. No way. This fight has just begun. 
Naruto replied, Nope, this fight has ended. Ares asked, Hmm? How so? I may have spent a lot of my energy but I can still keep going on. Naruto said, No, you can't. It was then Ares noticed a presence behind him. A shadow clone came from behind and had chopped his neck at that right moment with a special knockout seal prepared just for this event placed on the back of his neck, effectively knocking him out. Under normal situations, this kind of thing wouldn't have worked, but Ares was exhausted from his battle against Naruto and the unexpected attack when his guard was down made the seal super effective. Naruto then said, the battle was over the moment you let your guard down to talk. Naruto sealed Ares in a scroll and then prepared to leave when he heard a voice, my my, forgetting about somebody are we. Naruto then turned to look at the crooked titan who had a strange glow in his eyes. Naruto said, I haven't forgotten about you but I have no business with you Cronus. I got what I came for. Cronus said, and I am supposed to do what, just let you pass. Naruto said, what can you do about it? You may have awoken from your slumber but you are chained like a beast. Cronus looked at Naruto for a moment and then said, You are right. I can't do anything with these chains on me. But you could help free me. Naruto looked suspiciously at the Titan and asked, And exactly what do I gain by freeing you? Other than the ire of the Olympians. Cronus said, Ha ha ha, boy, don't you realize who you are talking to? I am the Titan of time. I can see the past, the present and the infinite number of possibilities in the future. He then added, Don't you want to know? What the future entails. What your future entails. What the wretched fate has in store for you. The most possible outcome from the path you travel. Naruto looked at the titan and smirked, tempting as that may sound, you would have to make a better offer for me to free you. Knowing the future will only seek to burden the mind unnecessarily in numerous ways and would only impede my progress. So no thank you. Cronus looked at Naruto for a moment and chuckled. He then started laughing, you are an interesting human, Naruto Izumaki. I'll be watching you closely whenever I can. Naruto then replied, Yeah, yeah, just shut up and go to sleep. He then clicked on a tool that Hades gave him or more like threw it into the portal before he left for Tartarus. Instantly, another portal opened up as Hades appeared through it Hades had arrived. Well, well, well. You managed to awaken my father, have you? Why did you do such an unnecessary thing? Naruto replied, not me. Ares. Cronus said, hello boy. Hades replied, hello to you as well, father. Hate to say that it's nice to see you even after all this time. So let's wrap this up shall we? Do you have Ares? Naruto nodded and showed a scroll to Hades. Hades then said, alright then. Let's leave this foul place before we attract any more attention to ourselves. And please go back to sleep, father. We already have enough trouble as it is. Cronus gave an ominous chuckle. As Naruto and Hades were going through the portal, Naruto heard Cronus say, Remember this Naruto Izumaki. If not today, then tomorrow. You will seek me one day. For I have seen your future and the allure of that knowledge will entice you to me. I shall wait for you to arrive until that time. Naruto said, Then keep on waiting, for that isn't happening brother. He then went through the portal leaving only the laughter of the crooked titan of time to prevail throughout the realm. Kyoh. The next morning, Azazel looked at Naruto and said, So, let me get this straight. You went out drinking last night with some of the workers that the school hired. Naruto looked down with his head and said, Yeah. And you drank a lot because those guys pressured you into drinking more than you could handle. Said Azazel Naruto replied, Yeah. And once you finished hanging out with your good buddies, you came back to school and then went to bed. Naruto replied, Yes. Azazel then asked, then explain to me, why the hell did you not only interfere with Kakabile's battle with the Aresis which I specifically told you not to, you went ahead and sexually assaulted him. Karama said in a mocking manner, your friend asks some very good questions. I am curious too, why Naruto? Why did you sexually assault the bird? Shut your ass up. Fuzz butt. I didn't sexually assault him, shouted Naruto. Naruto replied, I didn't sexually assault him, Azazel. Azazel said, then why in God's name did you proceed to rip of his clothes and wings off of his body and then hung him on a pole? Naruto replied, I was dressing the meat that is about to be cooked. And then once the meat was why the hell am I explaining this to you? Seriously, all the thousand years you spent in this world and you just dedicated the entire time to booze and women? Go learn some cooking. 
It's a much more productive than whoring and drinking around. Azazel then asked, attitude aside, I just want to ask this question burning inside me, why? Just why did you want to cook him? Naruto replied, I was starving and he looked like a delicious piece of bird meat. That's why I roasted him on a spit. Azazel shouted, how in the world does that explain anything? Naruto then replied sarcastically, oh gee, I don't know. Does the word drunk ring any bells? Azazel replied in his own sarcastic manner, yeah. It makes it so lot better now, does it? No, you fucking moron. It doesn't make it better. Karama said to him, he does have a point, brat. Like it or not. You screwed up once again due to your drinking problems. Even if Karama didn't say to him, Naruto knew his mistake. He screwed up big time. He then turned toward Azazel and said, All right, all right, I get it. I know it's a stupid mistake all right. Now just think on what to do next. Azazel sighed. He said, Stupid isn't enough to cover what you just did. But you're right, we can talk about dealing with this matter later, right now, let's focus on the present. He then said, Good news is that the only ones who were there and watching you were the Grammary Peerage. We were able to take your drunk ass away from there thanks to Vala's arrival. But the bad news is that there is that there will be some inquiries that are going to happen on how Kakabile was defeated, inevitably. We can control what is said for now if the Grammary heiress decides to cooperate. Naruto nodded his head, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Rias does owe me a favor, I can call it in. Azazel nodded his head and said, good. If she can stall her elder brothers and the attention of the rest of the devils, at least until the upcoming three faction meeting is done, we are in the safe zone. We can make it so that Vala was responsible for Kakabile's death. Naruto said, then there's no problem now, is there? Azazel shook his head and said, no. I don't think there is. But I am not so sure of what's happening anymore. From what I heard, Kakabile was supposed to attack them the day after tomorrow but he did so today. I think that someone pushed him to attack them now. Naruto then put his hand on his chin adopting a thinking pose. He asked Karama, you think it might be our guy? Karama said, possibly. Naruto then asked, but what does he gain by it? Karama shook his head, I don't know but my bets that it was just a diversion. We need to give this piece of info to the original. Naruto said, agreed. He then looked at Azazel and said, alright Azazel, you see what you can do on your end to take care of this mess and I'll do my part now. We can talk later once our work is done. Azazel nodded his head and left via a teleportation circle. Naruto then created a shadow clone and said, you take my place while I inform the boss of what happened here. The clone's clone nodded his head and said while grinning, he's going to not like the news right. The clone replied with a grin of his own, yep. All the more fun for us. The bastard leaves us on a boring job and gets to have a vacation in another country, serves him right. Clone Karama who were inside the clone body. The other tailed beasts who were watching the interaction. Matatabi then added, they do realize that they are the same person right. Karama nodded and then sighed. He said, once an idiot, always an idiot. 